Welcome to the seventh, uh, Ricky Gervais show on, uh, podcast. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. <laughs> now, talking of that, that's only five to go then, isn't it? Five to go in this series of twelve. Oh, still seems a lot though, doesn't it? We'll, uh, we'll take a little break. I'm sure we'll come back. Through popular demand, I'm hoping. Yep. I'm hoping to put that on the poster back by popular demand. Well, I'm well. hoping it's by overwhelming public demand. Which yeah, is exactly. My favorite. Yeah, yeah. As we're doing it for nothing. Yeah. We, we want to get a little bit of a pat on the back. Don't <laughs> exactly. We? Please. Somebody. Um, do they so give awards out for podcasting? Oh, if they do. Hoo hoo. Hello. <laughs> I am already died in my speech, baby. <laughs> um, and I was thinking that everyone listening, um, if you want to register, uh, your email with us, we'll let you know when we're back on air maybe later in the year, uh, go to rickygervais.com and just, um, register, and then when I do a general mail out, I'll let you all know when Carl Pilkington is back. You are a good guy to these people, Rick. No sweat. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's been an awful lot of correspondence, um, it's, I mean, it's, it's backing up there, we've got acres of it to get through. Um, it is a bit mental, actually, but it's very flattering, and, and thank you all, and people have, uh, sent such brilliant things in and spent so much time doing them. There's someone sent in this, uh, uh, uh mock-up of, we, we were talking about the, um, those Russian sort of iconoclastic artefacts, and someone's mocked up Carl Pilkington as Saint Carl the Bewildered. It's, <laughs> it's brilliant. It's so good. Can we put and those that, on the web? Yeah, I think, let's put that up on, um, rickygervais.com, and that's from, uh, Joe Murray in Philadelphia. We've also got one, which is a little work of art from Ed Ferrari, and it's the three of us in a studio, and it, it's, it's just great. It's a very flattering picture of you there, Rick. You look about 14. I know, I, I've come out very well in this. Carl has got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> look at that! Yeah. And you, well, I don't know what you are, you, you, your foot, your, your head is about two foot long, and in real <laughs> life it's only 18 inches long, isn't it? <laughs> so he's exaggerated yours yeah. a little bit, but it's a lovely drawing, we'll put that up on the web as well. It's just, uh, so, uh, everyone go to rickyjerase.com, everyone register, please, and we'll email you, and everyone, um, uh, keep sending stuff in, so thank you very much. Carl, Joe from Bradford asks, what body parts can you live without? He wants to know, he's obviously having sleepless nights thinking about this. What, so? Oh. <sighs> the, the, With a brain. <laughs> <laughs> he's coped this far. <laughs> so the bits that I've got now, if I had to get rid of yep. one of them, yep. what wouldn't I miss? Yes. Um. See, I, I did a bit of an experiment on this, right? Brilliant. It's, it's my job at home to, to wash up, right? Suzanne does. She gives you all the really big responsible <laughs> ones. Yeah. She, she, she sort of like pays the bills and wires the house. And she go, you go, what can I do? And you can go, well, you can go and play with the worms in the garden. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so it's my job to, to wash up and that, right? <laughs> and, um, I thought to sort of make it interesting and stuff. Uh, I thought, I wonder if I can do it, right? If I didn't have any thumbs. <laughs> 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 and so what did you do? So I just sort you of You sliced it. off your thumbs. I, I just sort of <laughs> elder men. And it's amazing how, like, it took me ages. Just having, like, that one thing gone. Well, it's part of our evolution, the opposable thumb. Basically, that's when we soared. Th 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 these are milestones in human evolution, the opposable thumb, the, the forward-facing eyes, the upright. Th these are these are massive things in, in taking us out of the animal kingdom. And uh, one day, Carl, you'll walk upright. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you mean about eyes facing forward? You mean... Before we got here, there was people who, uh, whose eyes were looking in their head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. That. Is that what well, you? No, mean? no, because when we got sort of uh, uh, binocular vision, where um, uh, we could we could you know because we were uh, predators have a forward face. I'm, I'm going way back. I'm not just saying. I'm not saying. Like, I'm not saying chimps had eyes on the side of their head, but I'm saying big, big, major um, milestones in any evolution. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, I lost your evolution, I yeah. think. So, uh, when you were doing this experiment, washing up, um, you say that you found it difficult, it took you ages, so you, you didn't, you didn't just give, give up once you realised how essential thumbs were, no, you actually washed up everything. I just think of Suzanne walking in, and Carl's there, just covered in water and, and fairy liquid suds, standing on a pile of broken crockery. Yeah, lun p plunging his face into the sink every three, thirty seconds and just <laughs> swishing his head around. <laughs> But we talked about the, the washing up thing before, I don't know, and, uh, I was stood there washing up, and, um, I sort of look out, out of, out of a window, so the sink's in front of the window. Yeah. And that's why I, I quite like washing up, because I can just look out onto the street, 
see people going past. He's like a local homeless fella called Franco. You know, I look out that like, he's all right and everything. Sure. But I was looking across the way, right, and there's some uh, sort of there's some Chinese people who live on in a flat, right, really small flat, and they're up till all hours. I don't know what they're doing, <laughs> <laughs> but they, they decide to back up at about half three in the morning. And that and they're always really noisy and that. But above them, there was some woman, right, who um, the sort of bedroom is on par to our kitchen, right? Yeah. So I'm sort of washing up. Yeah. And I sort of look across and see see this woman with, uh, like, you know, no no pants on and that, no no bra on that. Naked? Yeah, just... That's the word you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's just wandering about, you know, on that. So I was like, oh, that's going on here. So I ca- carried on washing up and that, right? And uh, <laughs> kept looking, and then I was looking and she looked at me, right? So we made eye contact. <laughs> sure. So I was like, oh, God, right? So, um... What I thought the best thing to do was, was sort of drop me pants a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just just a little bit, just like, you know, I had boxer shorts on and that. I thought if I just show a little bit of, little bit of sort of arse cheek, then it's kind of like, right, we, we quits. <laughs> <Right>? I don't <laughs> understand the thinking. <laughs> so, so Suzanne's watching the telly, right? I think she was watching Sex in the City or something. Yeah. She sort of turns around to see how I'm getting on with the washing up, right? She sees me with, like, my pants sort of down a little bit with my arse out. She said, what are you doing? I said, don't look now. I said, but there's a woman over the road, right? With no pants on and that. She caught me looking. I'm just giving her a bit back. <laughs> I love the fact that he explains the rules and Suzanne's meant to go, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. But I don't, so, so hang on, so you, you, you showed a bit of your arse, you turned, presumably, to show the arse, or well, waggled the arse just, out the I woman. had to lift it up a little bit on the, sort of, on the draining board. What, hang on though, what, um, what did she do? Did you register her reaction when she saw a bit of your arse? What happened? When she saw my arse? Yeah. Well, then I wasn't looking because I thought, in a way, it, I don't want, I don't want it to look like... Well, I've seen a bit of your stuff, here's a bit of mine. <laughs> I just look. thought, at the end of the day, I caught a glance of you. It's only fair. You've had a bit back. You know, I'm not you making see, a big I, deal out I of it. I genuinely think James Stewart missed a trick here in Rear Window. Yeah. This would have been, you know, a much better film had James Stewart just popped his pants down. It would have given a whole new meaning to the to the title Rear Window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's tricky though. I seem to be surrounded by people like that. Because I've told you before, there's the old woman across the way who's just sat there reading a the book. I, I looked through everybody's windows like that, uh, remember that film, that slither, sliver or something? Okay, right. When, when they've got video cameras. Yeah. I'm just looking onto everybody's world and just seeing what people are getting up to. There's nothing wrong with that. Brilliant. That's why I like washing up. <laughs> <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. <laughs> Chris has emailed a mantra for Carl. We were talking about famous mantras and sayings and things. Yeah. Never as a mank said so much to so many that means so little. Brilliant. So you can have that on your uh, headstone. Rupert. Your little round headstone. <laughs> Rupert's in the Isle of Man. He says, I don't know if you knew this, Carl, but apparently octopuses' testicles are located in their heads. Yeah. But then, to me, that isn't that, that amazing, because at the end of the day, an octopus, really, all it is is an head. <laughs> <laughs> So everything it's got has to be it in the head. It has to be in the head. It looked daft if they dangled down below. <laughs> right? So all, all it is is... I mean, there's a lot Hang of on, facts. It, it, it looked daft if they dangled down below. There's, <laughs> I'm wondering again, that's almost... I don't think you should start sending them in, but that could almost be the B-side to, uh... B-side to Nob at Night. I could eat a Nob at Night. James Round says, Carl, if you could be anyone in the world, who would it be? Uh. Dead or alive. Why would you choose to be a dead person? <laughs> no, but, but sometimes, like, these people who, who are now, now dead, but everybody raves about them. Like but, but are you saying, but he, he wants you to, to live that life, not have been that person. Are you saying that if you chose Napoleon, you'd be Napoleon, but he'd be back to life, um, uh, walking around now on the bus, or he, he, you know, it, it'd be the the eighteenth century, or what? What are you saying? Um, um, what what I mean is, if I'll oh, just answer the question: Who would you be, and why? It's someone you no, admire, no, no. or you think had a good life? Just but, answer the but question. But what I mean is, it's good to be remembered, like Winston Churchill is remembered yeah. as being a decent bloke. But I wouldn't want the asshole that he had, so I don't want to live his life. Right. 
but it's good to be- You'd like to be Winston Churchill, but you'd like to have a paper round <laughs> instead of, uh, 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 Saving the world. Yeah. Well, th that's- that's what I mean, but is he saying who would I want to- whose job would oh. I want to take on? It's not that complicated. The question is this, if he could be anyone in the world, who would Carl be? That's the question. That's all the information I've got. A lot of responsibility on a lot of jobs, isn't they? So <sighs> some of the names flowing through your head now? Um, I was thinking, um, Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> I never expected that! I never expected that! Uh, it, 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 uh, so when he, what, so his responsibility in your mind is what? Saving, uh, people who are trapped in a building with terrorists? Well, yeah, may maybe, you know, his, his worries are different worries. With, you know, people who have a lot of money come other worries. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Bruce Willis, he's always going on these marches, isn't he, saying stop war and all that. I Mainly know. because he's got, you know, he's got more, more to lose if there's a war. He's got loads of houses. One of them's gonna get damaged. <laughs> Whereas if you're poor, you've got the one house. If there's a war, it's like, oh, just end it all for me then. I'm sick of it anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sure. So with, Whereas with, Bruce, yeah. With, with, with successful <laughs> life and happy <laughs> life, there's more for you to lose is what I'm saying. Right. Like, at the moment, because I've, I've, I've finished a job that's, uh, that I've been at for ten years, right? I've finished working there, so suddenly I've got, me, me timetable's a bit out, and I haven't got enough of a routine, and I, I'm a man who likes to know what I'm doing, right? Yeah. So now, suddenly- Five I've, until seven, washing up, with no <laughs> thumbs. I, I like, I like, I, I've sort of turned into, like, an old person, <laughs> where the little jobs that you shouldn't enjoy- and now the main event. So but hold on, how old are you? You're 31, aren't you? 32. 32, and you're pottering around, <laughs> not knowing what to do with yourself. Well, like yesterday, Suzanne's shoes needed, uh, to go to the cobblers, right? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard the word cobblers! I didn't even know cobblers still existed. <laughs> I only ever see that in Christmas films made by Disney. Well, I had to go and do that, and that suddenly- Cause last time- last time you were going to the toffee shop. <laughs> and now you're going to the cobblers, next week it's the candlestick maker. <laughs> But all, <laughs> all I mean is, that suddenly is a nice little day out, I'm sort of putting my coat on, going, right, I'll go and, go and see the cobbler now yeah. and go and have a chat. Tell me about the cobbler. You didn't come back with three magic beans, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the cobbler's, cobbler's alright, he's, you know, he's doing, you know, he's fixing cobbling. shoes and that. He's cobbling, um, he's cobbling all day. Have I told you about, uh, my Uncle Alf, who was a cobbler? No. I'm sure I told you about him. He's, he's the one who, um, he lived in like a, a bed sit and he had two tellies. He had, he had like one that, that the sound didn't work on, oh and right. one that the picture didn't, but both together, <laughs> it worked. Oh, right, okay. So as long as he was watching the right, the same channel on both, sound came out of one telly, and he'd watch the picture on the other. Brilliant. And he slept in like a, a rubber dinghy, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but he was- he Whoa! Was, you can't just let that slide, why did he sleep in a rubber dinghy? He, he just liked boats and stuff, and, uh, he sort of- <laughs> Yeah, I like boats, but they're better on the water. Beds are better to sleep on, boats are better to sail on. Well, he just, he just had it in there, it's a bed set, it was really tight space. Boat set. He's got this, he's got it's this- He's moved into uh, a dinghy set. He's got this dinghy, so he's thinking, well, rather than it getting in the way, I might as well use it. Yeah. Right? But he was a, he was a cobbler. <laughs> and he, he used to, like, repair, like, my shoes and that, right? Yeah. But he, he'd always sort of overdo them. Right, so- <laughs> What do you mean? Like, uh um, <laughs> Fancy. Do you know, like, Pimp My Ride on MTV? Yeah. Because he does up shoes, he'd go mental on them. What do you mean? There was a, the stereo? Yeah. Well, no, There was it, horns? It, it, it's like- na na Here comes Carl Pilkington. Stripes down the yeah, yeah. Here comes Mr. Pilkington, he's yeah. got the fastest shoes in the land. No, it just makes shoes that would last forever, so instead of putting, like, one sole on, it'd put about five on. So you it looked like one of them built up shoes. <laughs> That you never see. It just put loads of stuff on. They'd last forever. <laughs> but they did. But they look like I, orthopedic I was, shoes. Yeah, yeah. It just like, the, suddenly I, I was like six foot seven. <laughs> whenever he'd sort of sorted my shoes out. <laughs> but he's, he's a cobbler and, you know, it's work that's, that's always, always there for you, isn't it? I so, suppose so. So you went out with, to, 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 to take, uh, Suzanne's shoes to the cobbler. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah, so I just took them to the cobblers and that. And that, that was a, like a nice little job for the day. Um, I got a leaflet through the door saying, you know, if you want to walk a dog, you know, the the rates are good. I don't know what they what they pay and that, but I got a little letter in my little letterbox saying, you know, if you if you're free in the day, what they pay you to walk pay, a dog, they pay you to walk a dog and that. And I thought if I do that and get a paper round, two in one. Sorry, 
you just went from a job, right, where you were the head of production at a radio station, dare I say it, on... I, I, can I discuss your... Uh, well, it was an all right wage, yeah. It was very good. But I wasn't happy, so it's pointless. No, I know that. But to go from the head of a department on a lot of money to walking dogs and doing a paper round, I, I don't know. No, I, but it's about being happy, isn't it? I know, but that's, that's commendable if that's true, but... It, okay. And that right. makes you happier? Well, I haven't, I haven't walked the dog yet, but I'm just saying if I do... I mean, I'm not taking it if it's raining. I'm just thinking, if it's a nice sunny day and I fancy a potter, I'll I'll go round to her and say, "Well, how much are you paying?" I'll take take the dog a walk. And sure. Stuff. But I, I can't believe some of the words that have cropped up in this. It's, 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 it's 2006 now. Potter, cobblers, toffee shop. It it it's uh, it's very very strange. Do you live in Narnia? <laughs> <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Right, uh, a lot of people are sort of emailing in sort of brainy stuff. Brilliant. Right, uh, which, you know, the more the merrier. I'm, I'm happy getting all this stuff and if, if, you know, it grabs me eye, I'll run it by you and you can sort of tell me about it and that. And getting a lot of stuff about, uh, philosophy. Oh, yeah. And all that. Um, Descartes is, that's another one that's mentioned on an email. Descartes. Yeah. The French philosopher. Yeah. What was, what's, what's your question? Well, he, he sort of cropped up on an email. Someone said, uh, what do you think of of him, and I was like, oh, I don't know. He, um, uh, famously, he, he pondered his, his own existence, uh, cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am. He was thinking about that, he was thinking, how do I know all this is true, everything around me? And he thought, uh, well, I can see it, and I can smell it, and I can hear it. And he went, oh yeah, my senses can be fooled, I could be dreaming. And he thought, well, that's true, I could be dreaming, but if I'm dreaming, then at least I'm alive, at least I have some sort of consciousness. So, if I'm even thinking about anything, uh, you know, I am, I exist. I think, therefore, I am. Cogito ergo sum. But we don't need to know the Latin bit. Why is everyone always going back to Latin? It was ages ago. <laughs> Why is that language always being... And w were Latin people always in a rush? Because they seem to be like words for full sentences. Why couldn't they just set at the time and say what they want to say? <laughs> And it's just like, what, what <laughs> was the rush? I love you to teach Latin! What about Plato? Right, Greek. Right, now, would you say he's, he's a bright bloke? Yes, I would. I'd say he's a very, very bright bloke. Right, let me tell you this. <laughs> right, if he's that bright, you know he got killed? No. Got hit on the head by an egg. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell! Well, he's right, not, he's not so clever then, is he? That's what I'm saying. Boo! What's the story with the egg? He was, um... He was on holiday or something, right? <laughs> and <laughs> he was on holiday in Greece, probably. He yeah. was at, he was having a walk about, and a bird was flying over the over his um, over sort of. This over bird the was what a great orc. What what so, what size bird he killed him with his was, egg? It was a big one, yeah. Was it? And and the way they used to crack well, an ostrich on a hang glider. The way they used to crack the eggs open to let the kids out, they used to drop them on rocks. <laughs> Dropping its egg to let the kids out. <laughs> You're a maniac. You are a maniac. And Plato <laughs> had a little bald head. Right. So from the top, the bird's there looking down, and it goes, "Oh, there's there's a little rock. I'll drop the egg." Hit him on the head, killed him. Now this is what I was saying before about. I mean, well, I'm letting too much go now because I'm so desensitised to his nonsense. I let him go. The bird saw Plato and said, "There's a rock down there." Yeah. Well, if he stop it, if these birds are killing people with bald heads, you've got to be terrified. So, but listen, this is what I'm saying though, right? Before about knowledge and that, our, our knowledge is, is hassle, or success is That's hassle. That's that, I, now, now th I think that was Newton, <laughs> knowledge is hassle. Now, what, what, but why, why is, is Plato's intelligence got anything to do with the fact that this bird dropped it because, on the his head? Because he was intelligent, and he's probably earning a nice few quid, yeah. by giving out whatever messages he gave out. Yeah. He could afford to go on holiday to exotic places. If he was working in a factory, <laughs> he wouldn't have been on this beach with big birds dropping eggs. <laughs> is what I'm saying. So, in a way, it backfired. His knowledge killed him. And that, I think, was Kierkegaard. His knowledge killed him. That's... I mean, where you got this stuff about him being on holiday? Well, he, he was... He, he shouldn't have been on the beach. He was only there having a break or whatever from doing what he does. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened if he wasn't on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Again, I can't remember which show this was that we were discussing this, but we talked about um, well-known phrases and um, quotes from the past. We talked about Benjamin Franklin. People have, uh, this is an email we've had saying, um, Carl, what do you take by the uh, well-known saying, a stitch in time saves nine. A stitch in time saves nine. Oh, a stitch in time saves nine. Yeah. See, uh, it's another one that I don't, I don't think I've picked up on a lot of these sayings that are being sort of thrown about willy-nilly. Um, willy-nilly. <laughs> willy-nilly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Willy nilly. No, yeah. no, but I, I, again, it's one of them. Like, like last week, I've heard of it, but but what I've does willy nilly mean? Just sort of like throwing it about all over the place. What? What, what do you mean? But what if someone said, what? What does what does the term willy nilly mean? It just sort of means you know carefree. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so but what good. does a stitch so in time say? So you nine understood willy nilly. So you used a phrase. Yeah, it I mean, nice, you used it. it. You said it willy nilly. But um, uh, <laughs> you you sort of got the gist of it. So what does a stitch in time saves nine mean? I I, I don't know. You what do you mean know. you don't know? Think about it. A stitch in time saves nine. Is it to do with sewing? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, so okay, if, it's not that clear. So if not... you got a, so if you got a jacket, yeah, and the seam starts coming undone. Oh, there's a little bit of seam. I'll leave it. Oh, it's getting worse and right, worse. Soon right. your sleeve falls off. So, just need one stitch there, that'll do it. If you do it now, later you'll need nine stitches. And that, of course, uh, is an analogy to other things. If you leave something that, that, that needs attention or repair, it'll get worse. So do it now. Do it in time. Yeah, they could have said a tile in so time saves nine on your roof. They just used a, you know, a sewing analogy. But it depends if you're busy at that point, because <laughs> if, you've got, if you've got something else that needs doing, that means that isn't being done because you're messing about putting something out of a hole in your coat, is what I mean. Yeah. You can't always do stuff straight away. So maybe, I don't know, I don't know if there's a, a, a sort of a middle ground where you don't have to do it straight away, but stitching- A stitch sometimes time, today. Say in 15 or whatever, meaning yeah. you don't have to do it straight away, but just do it before it gets really bad. Brilliant. Do you think yours is less poetic than, than a stitch in time saves nine? So yours is, this is what you wanted to be a quote, right? Well, well you could do it now, but if you're doing something else, then, uh, you know, look, well, don't do it immediately, but do it soon so it doesn't get really bad. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> no, but it's the same, that's the same way I treat most things in life. It's like, I never go to the doctors unless it's really That is sensible. Bad. That is very good advice. No. That's brilliant advice well, for anyone is, listening. Never go to the doctors. Unless it's really bad. But that's why a lot of people, particularly working class people, you know, um, die because they don't want to bother the doctor or they're mildly embarrassed or they don't know, um, symptoms, bad symptoms. Go to the doctor if, 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 you, if you're not sure about something. Like, you were terrified to go and have your prostate. Still not been. Not doing it. Why not? I wish you wouldn't talk about it, because now Suzanne will listen to this, and she'll go, oh yeah, you haven't been, and start dragging it up again. But why are you worried about a, a little, uh, a, a qualified I doctor? I don't know what they're doing up there. What, they what just pop- What year are we in? They- <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? They pop their finger up. That's what I mean, though. Why? Well, it's 2006. Yeah. Why are they still using the index finger? <laughs> what, would you prefer the forefinger or the thumb, would no. you? No, what I mean oh! is, we've got- Or a thumb on a stick, some kind of thumb on a stick, you-, you Yeah, would you prefer it to a be- A mechanical thumb, a robot go. thumb. Why isn't it just a little camera? Or something that- they have, Well, they put the camera up if, if they initially discover something. But just put the camera up straight away if No, they don't the need visit. to. They pop the finger up, feel that the prostate isn't swollen, wiggle it around a little bit, up your, uh, 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 up your back passage. They'd, what I are just, you worried I, about? I don't think- they, they need to do are that. Are you embarrassed? Are you embarrassed about being in a room with your trousers around your ankles and a little fellow popping his- A little bit, yeah. Why? And the other thing is, it's not just that, is it? So, <laughs> you go in there, they check your heart out and that, which to me is the most important thing, because that's what keeps you going, isn't it? <laughs> yeah! Right? You've got to go there, you yeah. sat on the bus, stressing out, thinking, oh, in less than half an hour I'm gonna have a finger up your ass, <laughs> right? <laughs> what is the problem And they go though? in, they check your heart, they probably- <laughs> Check your testicles and that. What's up with that? They check your testicles, yeah. That's yeah, but it's all building, and you, you've sat there going, oh, soon that'll, that'll be happening. Yeah. And that's what puts me off. So if they just came round when you were asleep, <laughs> Suzanne just let them in and goes, he's over there, right? Yeah. And they crept up and went, <laughs> bang, you, you go, what are you doing? That. I just don't understand why they don't teach you how to do it yourself. How can they- <laughs> Wow! I <laughs> did! Imagine you squatting in a corner with one hand on your bollocks and the other finger up the arse going, it seems to be alright. Carl, you don't understand the phrase a stitch in time saves night. I don't think you should be doing any kind of invasive medical research in your own human body. But, but then- Who knows what trouble you're gonna cause? No, but then at you least- You would get stuck. 
Yeah. You would get stuck. Susanna come out, your fist would be up your own arse. <laughs> Okay, I think it's probably time. I've just let me just check my watch. Yeah, it's monkey news time. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, yeah. Right. Last week we talked about uh you know, the the one who who was who was good at getting up buildings and that for uh putting out fires and stuff, ended yeah. up working for the fire department. Yeah, not true, but sure. Yeah. But if, uh, was, if the building had good grippage, he was right up there. Yeah, yeah. it's not true, but come on. So this week anyway, it's about it's more about tall buildings and stuff. Oh yeah. It was this bloke who was a builder. Oh yeah, right. and uh, you know what builders are like—they sort of move about, don't they? From from sort of building to building, just building. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, once they built it, the building's done, and they move on to they build some more. Building to building, just building. Yeah. So he goes to his next job, and that right? Who does the builder? The builder. Yep. He goes to like the, the, the boss. The, new building. the boss of this building, who's building it? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And he and he says what unto him? Do you need anything building? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. So anyway. So he says, uh, he says, yeah, yeah, there's plenty of work and that going about. Yep. He says, we're working on this one here. He said, uh, get going on it, like, there's your bricks and your cement and stuff, get on with it. Yeah. Mm. So the, so Any the, plans? So nah. the, so the, <laughs> just build. Just, just start building. Yeah. Go up. To getting on with it and stuff, it's all going well. Right? Yep. Um, but he notices that there's someone working eye up, mm. right, <laughs> on, on <laughs> okay. the top bit. Sure. Because, do you know, like, there's girders and stuff on these big yeah. buildings. Yeah. And he's still building and, the bottom bit, and which he's is still, weird. Yeah, well, that's, that's the, the way they, they do it there, apparently, just to sort of speed it up, work from top to middle, from top to bottom. Sure, you know right. that's, and that's where, that's in imaginary land. So we so put anyway. the spire on, and we've got to do the foundations, <laughs> yeah. and then put some stuff in the middle to keep it up there. So anyway, he's, he's saying to, like, the other workers, he's going, what's, who's that up there? Who's that up like, there? Who's, yeah. who's working on his own? The li what, the little fella, was he? And, the uh, little hairy fella up there. He's the little hairy fella up there with the uh, hard hat. And, and the other fellows are going, look, you know, don't ask questions, you know, the boss decides who he takes on, we're mm. happy to be getting paid here. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask questions! Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll see him when he comes down. So he said, well, it's pretty impressive, you know, the, the work rate he's doing, the way he's getting from one girder to the other. <laughs> he Swinging, seem, is he? He doesn't seem to be scared mm. of the heights or anything, he said, no, just let him get on with it, you know, we work well as a team. So anyway, <laughs> what nonsense is so, this? So oh, he believes all this. Yep. So he sees the boss and he goes, "That fella up there, uh, who's the fella up there? He's, he's pretty good." And he's like, "Look, you know, just get on with the job. Yeah, I'll pay you. Let's just all get on with our jobs." And that <laughs> lunchtime comes, they're all sat there, sat on a little wall, having the sandwich. He's just thinking he'll come down in a bit. He's yeah. just carrying on. Yeah. Is he just still going? Still yeah. going on that, right? Mm. So the fella says to the boss man, "He says, isn't, isn't that fella up there uh, going to come down and join us for lunch?" He said, uh, he said, like I said, mate, don't, don't worry about him, right? Yeah. He yeah, said, very I'm suspicious about this fella, I don't know, yeah, said, I don't know, he said, I don't know why he's working through his lunch, I don't know why he's not scared of heights, and I don't know why he's swinging from girder to girder, it's weird, go on. So he said, oh, anyway, you've reminded me that he's up there. He said, um, he's doing a lot of riveting and stuff up there. He probably needs some more nuts to, uh... Right, sure, and what kind of nuts is that? Is that nuts to food, or...? So, he said, what, nuts? He said, yeah, just, uh, there's a bag full of them there, just, just put them on the hook, send them up, and he can get on with his job. So anyway, he picks these nuts up, nuts, right, yep. just hooks them on, he thinks they're not that heavy, no. considering, you know, I mean, they're normally pretty heavy, aren't they, like, nuts a big and bolts and stuff. Yeah. So anyway, he has a little glance in. Oh, no, what's in there? Nuts. What, you mean nuts that you can eat? Nuts that you can eat, oh. right? So, they send the bag up, and he's thinking, what's all that about? He checks him out, starts to stare, works it out, you can see that. He's a little chimp running about, so he goes, I'm not happy with this. Why so, isn't he? Because he's working for an organisation that's, you know, there's unions for this sort of stuff, isn't <laughs> is there? Yeah, he's not going, that's amazing. They've got a chimp riveting this building together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not scary. He's wondering if they're breaking union <laughs> rules. So he, he, go, he you goes- You half talk So he goes, shit, and he with he the goes boss. to the boss and he goes, look, I've worked out what you're playing at here. Yeah. He said, all oh, them out Is there. the boss sitting in a tyre? <laughs> He said, all them lot out there might not be wise to what's what's going on here. He yeah. said, but I've, I've clocked it, and you're sending nuts up to it, it's a monkey, it's not on. So he goes, look, you know, we just all try to earn a living here. He said, uh, don't get involved in it. I'm happy to pay you, but I'm paying him, don't, don't interfere. He's paying him? And he's saying, look, I, I'm just not happy with this, it's, it's not allowed. So the boss was saying, well, We pay honest, peanuts, mate, we get monkeys. He said, to be honest, mate, you know, uh, he, he's a great worker. <laughs> He's known for doing what he does. He's a good grafter. <laughs> if one of you's gonna go, right, I'm afraid I'll have to let you go because he's, he's been here longer than that. Yeah, he was made redundant. None because of that he happened. He, he was he was laid off. None of that happened. He's laid off from that, and that's no. where that saying about um, 
you know, like there's a lot of tower blocks and that in America. It's not like the chimp off the old block. Is is where? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so that's monkey news. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this uh, podcast. Who was it hosted by? It was hosted by a great bunch of guys called Positive Internet. They host the number one podcast in the world, The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, goodbye, and Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Hello, welcome to the eighth in uh, this series of 12 podcasts, The Ricky Gervais Show, uh, with The Guardian. I'm Ricky Gervais. Hello. With me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. Uh, and Carl Pilkington. All right. So... Thank you again for all your emails. Um, we're getting thousands. We, we're up to about a quarter of a million hits a week now, people listening to this show. Blimey. A quarter of a million people bothering to go in and listen to this show. Nothing else in their lives. Nothing all around the world. To do. It's unbelievable, though. North America, uh, Asia, South America, all over Europe. Um, and, uh, and thanks to everyone in England as well, um, where we do it from in a little room in London. Keep going to rickygervais.com and registering, because uh, so when we finish these 12, we can email you when we come back and start again. We're going to need a, a little bit of time off to um, record the second series of extras. Well, I'll tell you more than that, Rick. You're going to need some time off just to have a little breather, because I know how hard you work. Uh, and, and you, mate. Well, thanks, mate. But, I mean, you blinking work hard. But um, Carl's been on holiday again, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because, Carl, you, you don't do anything. And you have weekends off. You take at least five or six weeks holiday a year, even though you haven't got a job now. You're meant to be doing this. And yet you still so go on holiday. So your whole life's a holiday, basically. Yeah, why do you need a holiday? To, you, you, you potter around. You, it, you, your, your, big, your big day last week was going to the cobblers. So... Why do you need a break so much this oh, week? It's, it's just that, you know, it's it's good for your brain and that, isn't it? It's, it's, it opens well, it up a bit. You are not evidence for that. Where did you go? Grand Canaria. For a week? Yeah. Just sitting around? Um, well, it, there isn't much else to do at Grand Canaria. I mean, I, I don't want to go slagging a place off because every time I seem to talk about somewhere, I get into trouble for it. Right. But it's just a, like a big rock. It's Brilliant. just vol volcanic, isn't it? It's and you must have looked like a, a little barnacle on that. Have you been there before? Um, been, been near it before to another rock, which was just, but it what, was the same sort of thing. Brain. why did you go back? Because you think, well, they can't have loads of these islands that are the same, like, just a big rock with hotels on, they can't get away with it. So you <laughs> think, <laughs> they well, obviously the next are one. getting away with it. <laughs> but why, why do you keep going to these places that are rocks? Why don't you investigate first? Ask your travel agent, is this a giant rock? Because, because that's what you do, innit? You go and find out yourself. I mean, <laughs> when, when Armstrong went to the moon, what was he expecting up there? That's a fact that it's a big rock, and he still went all that way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so, know what so, that point was. No, so what, so what I'm saying is, though, sometimes... It, it, tell it, us about it, the, tell us about the moon landing. What, as you started it, what do you know about that? You know, because, I mean, so far you've given us a lot of insight into, into the, uh, the moon landing. So there was Armstrong. There was, uh, there was Armstrong in that. Yeah. There was, um, a fella called Buzz. Yeah. And another bloke. Yeah. Poor bastard. Yeah, never remembered. <laughs> yeah, go on. And, uh, they went up there, got out, two of them did. One of them didn't bother. The one whose name, don't know who he was. <laughs> didn't even get out to stretch his legs, right? Went all that way. They had a potter about, had a wander, came back again. Yeah. So, that's all you need to know, isn't it? Yeah. But and in your opinion, pointless? Um, to me, yeah. But to them, I'm sure they had a good time, and that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just take the risk, don't you? Go and visit a place. Make up your own mind. And so, you, what do you make of this place? You enjoy it, Grand Canaria? It was just a big rock, but did you-, you I bet you... the moon was better. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? It was just, uh, you know, it's one of them, it's big hotel, which is, um, that's where I made a mistake. It was one of those, like, big, massive places where there's loads of people. And you know, you go for your dinner. That describes a hotel. Yeah. No, no, no. no. You've nailed that. But I've been to a few, that sounds like it. No, but <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean, though? There's the sort, there's the nice small ones where mm. it's just enough people, but this is like mental. And, and it was all, it was, it was full of old people, really. Ugh. I mean, that's, that's probably why it's called Grand Canaria, right? Because it's just like, Grand old is people. Everywhere. Yeah, right. But what I thought I'd start doing is, uh, start a diary. Okay, why? Just because I, I sort of had a bit of time on my hands and that. Just thought, write it down, write, write stuff down. And like. do you hope that this one day will become one of the great literary documents like Samuel Pepys' diary? Um, I haven't heard of that. Is it any good? 
You've never heard of Samuel Pepys' diary? <laughs> no, the, the, the most the, famous diary uh, other than probably Anne Frank's. I've heard of Anne Frank's and that, and I thought if she's sat in a you know a loft knocking stuff up, not much going on in her life at that point. Yet sure. she was still writing it down. Yeah, whereas she'd been to Grand Canaria. Yeah, I thought so. There is stuff going on that I can chat about. Start a diary. Sure, you started a diary. Yeah. And what are you gonna do? You did you did you keep it up every day? Yeah, just. Uh, oh, can I read it, please? Well, a diary is meant to be sort. C of please, can I read some out on this podcast? I, Carl. Some of it though is only relevant to me. It's sort of. Oh, giving... this is. Please give me it. Oh my God. I mean, this isn't. I haven't just. Look how big it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh one of those God. desk diaries. It's huge. It's about a foot long, and it's ma Oh, that is amazing. Imagine if Anne Frank's had been like that. As she got out, <laughs> right, uh, everyone would have heard it clanked down on the desk. Yeah, but my writing's quite big, isn't it? Oh look, give us oh, that. Do give you us know, that. Do you know about joined up writing? Have you this heard about is that? No Amazing. Point. Sometimes you can't read it, can you? So it's best right, to okay. look at, oh, look at oh look! Times. Oh my God! It starts on the first day. This is this is wonderful. Going on holiday to Gran Canaria today. Woke up to the news that Tony Banks had died. There was a piece of on the news about how everyone was shocked. Got me thinking about an invention that would be good. Right, a, a watch that counted down your life. If it says you've got three days left, <laughs> go to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne about invention. She said she wouldn't buy one, but she said that about the iPod. How uh, and how would this device work? This watch. I mean, how would you uh, how would you know when you were about to die? Have you, is that a concern? Again, not for you to worry about, presumably the boffins and the No, all I was thinking is that Tony Banks fella, you know, he died and everyone was shocked about it. But if you had like a little watch on. But how does it, well, you can't just say, wouldn't it be good? How, how would this work? Yeah, um, I imagine you're in the patent office going, got an idea. They go, oh, certainly, yeah, Mr. Bogdan, what's your idea? Watch that counting down your life. Oh, how does that work? What? Just, just, well, it, just pop it on your wrist. No, 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 what do you mean? Just pop it on your wrist. How does it work? Just pop it on your wrist. Brilliant. You're an idiot. Well, it's interesting that he goes on. The flight to Gran Canaria was a bit bumpy. I thought about the clock that counts down your life again, and I wondered if it would know if you were going to die in a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's querying his own his own <laughs> life. He's wondering yeah. if it would know. He's invented this. He's and invented, <laughs> now he's having <laughs> shot. Uh, a fellow on the plane was reading Koi Mag. It was a fishing magazine. I glanced over and noticed he was reading the Pond of the Month article. <laughs> Don't think they could make it into a weekly magazine. Well, to be fair to you, I because I remember seeing a guy on the train once reading Carp Monthly, yeah. a magazine do dedicated entirely to carp, and it had it had Carp of the Month, and I just thought, you know, once you're like three months in, the editor must be stressing. Have we got any more carp? Have we got a carp that's actually done anything? That's I reckon if they used the same one twice, there wouldn't be many complaints. No one would be noticing. No, that, well, that's the carp they used two years ago. There was a really fat bloke on the plane. He yeah. was playing on his PSP while I waited to go to the toilet. I looked at what game he was playing. It was darts. He's that fat and lazy, he can't even face playing a more active game on a games console. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Suzanne got off the coach along with a couple of old people. One of them was in a wheelchair. I don't think it was wise of them to come to a volcanic island with a wheelchair. <laughs> Everywhere is pretty rough, paving and slopey. Guess I'll keep an eye on it as the weeks go on. <laughs> day two in Gran Canaria. Brilliant, we're only at day two. The hotel's a bit odd. I've never seen as many cross-eyed people in one location. <laughs> that's oh, enough, isn't it? That's amazing! Well, you may as well let me read on a bit more. No, this is amazing. Well, look, come back this to is a brilliant now. diary. This might be the best diary ever written. Oh. While sat listening to the kinks on my iPod, I wondered if everybody thinks in their accent. I know I do. What's, what's this? What are you talking about? Just, just that, uh. You know, when, I, when I've been sat there lying on the lounger, right, and I was <laughs> thinking about stuff- How do you it. know you think in your accent? Tell me a typical thought. Because, because what I mean is, say, say if I was like, if I saw something, right, do you know how I say, like, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, <laughs> no, but that was I don't have said. to- but in- I, when you think, I don't think the sentence is like I'm saying it. It's just a thought, the thought appears, it's conceptual and it's already there. It's not like, um, I go, Rick, what? Just, uh, looking at that fellow over there, were you? Yeah, I was, yeah. Um, I was thinking it looks a bit weird. Oh, so was I. I don't- I don't think out whole sentences. Whereas you have- Carl, <laughs> Carl, li Carl, stop listening to the kinks for a minute. Look over there. More- more cross-eyed people. <laughs> no, well that's- yeah, that's Is that how your mind works? In a way, yeah. 
And Brilliant. that's when it, because because I <laughs> that thought a lot. <laughs> it's great that he has to think about whole sentences. Because I thought that's weird, isn't it? Like I didn't think that's weird, isn't it? And I mm. thought I actually think in my accent. And then I thought, does Stephen Hawking? Does he when he's doing his maths and that? Mm. Is he? I don't know where he's from, so I don't know what his accent would be like. I think he's from uh, Kent or Cambridge or Oxford. Right. Or so so you think he might think in his in, in his, his voice in that yeah, in that voice in computerized box thing. voice. Just wondered. Had lunch inside today due to shite weather. Sat next to an old fella. Old men's ears and noses carry on growing as they get older. Suzanne noticed his fingers were fat too. Maybe they continue to grow. Suzanne didn't laugh when I said her arse had the same problem. <laughs> day three, cloudy start to the day. Had pie and chips in a cafe. Had a bit of an argument with Suzanne because I thought it was daft that we were paying for food when we were on an all-inclusive holiday. Changed my mind when I saw the... They sold pie, though. <laughs> the cafe was called Tattoos. The fellow who owned it didn't have any tattoos. But we never saw his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Had a drink in a bar. Everyone sat and watched one of the local cats lick its bollocks. <laughs> Went back to the hotel and had a sleep before tea. I love the fact you're like, you're moaning about old people, but you're just as bad. <laughs> You've done nothing so far. <laughs> he's done nothing, he's got a big hip. <laughs> oh, God, God. <laughs> uh. Uh. Woke up to news about ducks being badly treated. There was a really ugly one with bent legs. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Why does he write this down? Oh, God. Oh. There is a fat bloke from Bolton who is in the pool as I write this. He's got a big tattoo on his back, but I can't work out what it is. Dot, dot, dot. He just got out of the pool and burped. He just felt like you had to keep us abreast of that. <laughs> Everything's in the diary. i just seen it get to the point where you're going, breathed in. <laughs> yeah. Breathed out again. There was a big fat fella in the sea who kept his t-shirt on. If you're big and fat, is there more chance of you getting burnt because there's more of you on show? I asked Suzanne and she said she didn't know in that sort of not listening kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hang about to see if the fat bloke was going to get in the kayak, <laughs> but Suzanne, <laughs> Suzanne said we had a head back. <laughs> I just let him wait in to see if he's going <laughs> to capsize. <laughs> we go home today, so we got up early to get the last bit of cloud. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just that it wasn't, uh, it, it's, it's not that sunny all the time. I mean, I, I was sat in in weather that, if it was like that air, there's no way to be sat in the garden. <laughs> yeah. But because you're on holiday, it's like, well, we've got to sit in it, put your coat on. So are you going to continue to write this diary? Every yeah, single day? It's amazing. Keep this diary up. No, it's amazing. I, I, no, I will. I will keep it up. Because what I find as well is, I think earlier on, before I went away, I think I did learn something. And because I wrote it down, I, I remembered it a bit, um, better. So... What was that? I just was thinking then, I forgot it now, but <laughs> <laughs> but I remembered looking back at it and not having to read it all because I remembered the end of it before I read it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, if you've enjoyed uh, um, the diary of Carl Pilkington, um, more next week, I hope, another week's worth. That's amazing. I'm going to try and get that published. We'll put the, uh, the odd page up on the uh, web. Go to rickygervais.com. Don't forget to register there as well so we can email you and let you know uh, what's happening. Brilliant. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Hey, fool! Don't give me no back chat, sucker! I ain't here to mess with you, I ain't getting in no plane. I'm here to tell you all about Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. Hmm. There's three great new comedies New Green Wing, Yeah, Fool, That's Nearly Ready, My Name is Earl, and The Egg Crowd. That great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted, sucker. Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4, Fool. Switch it on, or I'll be around your house. You stay up all night shivering, could you be so mad scared? Fool. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Rick, who hosts this podcast? The guys at Positive Internet, why? Now, you, I know you're a big fan of those guys. Yeah, because they're brilliant. Well, yeah, they are, and they'll tell you they're working overtime. Because we've had an email from Jake, who's the director at Positive Internet, and apparently he's been in touch with uh, the editor of the Guinness World Records book. All right. Um, and he's hoping to see if we can get this podcast in the uh, Guinness World Record-breaking 
section or the podcast world record record breaking section or whatever they call it i don't know exactly what record we've broken i assume it's just sheer number of listeners is it or, or yeah with the number the, one yeah, it's the number one podcast and it's the biggest downloaded show ever at the moment right um I think that's because p- people have only had podcasts for a couple of years. Yes, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know when the next issue comes out. I guess it's sort of December time. I used it? to get the Guinness Book of Records every year. I, I, I love it. I've never understood why it was such a big seller. I mean, presumably, who's excited to find out whether, you know, I don't know, a man that can balance three egg cups on his head has beaten the record. Well, the they're real year. records as well, obviously. I, I used to go straight for that. I really loved the sort of, uh, animals fastest, strongest, all that sort of thing, biggest. But aren't they the same every year? Well, well, no, they do change. And obviously there's, there's new entries to, to keep it exciting. Um, but what annoys me is that you, I, it looks like anyone can get in if you're willing to do something that no one else will bother with. Yeah. I, I they did one on Big Brother where it was the, um, uh, stacking sugar cubes. And I was mm. thinking, well, no one's gonna bother beating that. No. There's people that, um, uh, walk along with a milk bottle on their head. And no one's going, oh, I'm a bit jealous of Bill. Why? He's broken the record. <laughs> what? For walking along with a milk bottle on his head? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go into training tomorrow. They're ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but I do like the, you know, the, the real ones. There was one in there, I, I got on a couple of years ago, and, uh, it was about, um, uh, disasters. And there was one where there was some, um, big ornamental incense burners at this thing in, um, I think, uh, Thailand or, or Korea or somewhere. And, uh, they fell over and they killed seven of the congregation. And the headline was Biggest Jostic Disaster. <laughs> now, again, there's no one trying to beat no. that. There's no one going, we need eight. Yeah. We need eight people. We're going for it tonight. Uh, what do I have to do? You have to stand quite near those big jostics. Okay. And okay. what record am I breaking again? Um, <laughs> we'll tell you after. Also, I think a lot of people waste their energy on this because there's one guy in there that can do the hundred metres in eleven seconds running backwards. And I want to say to him, turn round. Because I think you'd be fast forwards, you know, yeah, if you'd have only, yeah. from the age of ten, sort of, you, you, you might be, you know, one of the fastest runners in the world. Because you're never going to be considered one of the great athletes for doing that. No backwards. one knows about him. That's not going to ever be an Olympic sport, no. running backwards. No. Or, uh, well, um, and now the hundred metres, oh, one of them's putting a milk bottle on his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is one to watch. There yeah, was it, a guy in there, um, I've always been fascinated by the guy, he had, um, the world's longest fingernails. And they were truly extraordinary. And they, and they, they, w- they went out and they c- started to curl round, obviously. And in the end, he almost looked like sort of a, you know, there was a big spiral of right. gnarled old fingernail. But I just thought, it just seemed like such a terrible affliction, really, to be walking around you know, with, with these giant fingers, well, so you much you can't do, just missing out on, you know, Jeff, you come in bowling? I can. You yeah. know, just so many different things that you've missed out on. I've never quite understood who's willing to, to have this eat into their life, you know, it's gonna take over their whole life, just so they can have their photo in this book. It seems a very bizarre impulse. Carl, have you ever been tempted by any, any world-breaking attempts? Do you find them fascinating or futile? Um, I mean, you don't get, you don't get paid or anything, do you? No. They and do it for the pride. Well, say like the fella who can run with a milk bottle. Could he? Could he get a milk round? Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I, I, c- I can understand that if if you can use the skill, yeah. but like you say, if it's a uh, if it's getting in the way of your life and that, then w- what's the point? There was yeah. a kid at school who said, I've, "I'm in the Guinness Book of Records." And I went, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." He said, "No, I am, I am, I am." And he brought it in, and it. Now, I don't know if this is a valid claim. He, he claimed to have been in the audience for what, in this particular edition, was labelled, you know, the largest audience ever for a sporting event, some giant Super Bowl game in America. Oh, and right. he claimed to have been in the audience. Now, does that, ca- does, do you think he, he, he deserves to say he's in the Guinness Book of Records? Just well, as, mm. sort of. I, I think that's a lot. As it was the largest audience ever, I think a lot of people can claim yeah. that one. I mean... If I he th- wanted to get a name check on doing that, he would have been best saying, I was sat in the audience in a bath of beans. <laughs> because yeah. then that, that would add to, the, yeah. to it, and yeah. you get a little, you know, they'd have you in the picture, wouldn't they? <laughs> so. He's Mr. Trick that way. Yeah. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Harry from Canterbury wants to know whether any of us have ever had any cruel nicknames. Um, he claims that he's uh, quite tall and rather hirsute. And he says he's often called Lurch or Wolfie. Um, he's always thought that Carl looks a bit like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, th- there's no potato that round. But, um, I suppose you could fashion a potato to be that round. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could, if anyone can uh, carve a potato into the roundest head ever, <laughs> yeah. pop a couple of eyes on it. Make um, it look as much like Carl as possible. Exactly. But yeah, did any nicknames? Did you ever have a nickname, uh, Rick? No, mine was boring. I didn't have any. It was just around the name, like Jerv or something like that. No, I didn't have nicknames. I always wanted a nickname. 
Um, I just thought it was quite cool for some reason, particularly because gangsters always seem to have nicknames. Lefty. You know, fingers. Yeah. Lefty, yeah. Uh, Scarface. Yeah. And so I, I decided that I thought, because no one was giving me a nickname at school, it was kind of annoying, or certainly not to my face, yeah. that I decided to just come up with one. Yeah. And so I went, I remember I was at lunch once, and I just said to my mate Phil. How old were you? Uh, 12, 13. Brilliant. I just said to him, uh, Phil, um, don't know if you know, mate, but, um, people aren't calling me Steve anymore. Everyone's, everyone's calling me Spud now. Now, I don't know why I thought Spud, it's weird we should talk about Mr. Potato, I don't know why I thought Spud was a, was a cool nickname. I just sort of, I think it's, it's a grown up it, name though, isn't it? And it's also because I think it sounded like, uh, it, it was probably either something that you'd find in one of those kids' books, like the famous five or like the Bash Street kids, they'd be Spud. And I always imagine with Spud, he's not the leader of the gang, but he's a reliable member. I think you know Spud I mean? is the biggest lorry driver in one yeah. particular sort of uh, car park. Yeah. Here comes Spud. Yeah. And he gets out, all right, boys. And he's big and massive. And he, a Spud can eat two breakfasts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I just, in my mind, it was, yeah, that I would be one day part of a gang and it's, I'm Pinky, this is Jojo, and the tall guy's Spud. And you know, catch on, never did really it? caught. And he just went, oh, yeah, right. And no one started. And I was hoping he'd go, you know, everyone's calling Steve Spud. Yeah. But of course. Hey, Spud, the first time I said Spud, you go, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd be really proud, wouldn't you? <laughs> but, um, but I think that it, it, it kind of, actually, in a way, it probably revealed that. I just was probably not in people's thoughts enough to, to get, to get for the nickname to catch on, you know, because you sort of yeah, need I, to be a real player in the I school. I think you should have gone something more memorable, I mean, I'm not saying in goggle eyed freak or anything. What? Uh, what? No, no, just- uh, Well, no, no, it's good, no, it's good advice, fatty. <laughs> Fatty, fatty pot That's belly. the problem, I wasn't fat at school, and I suppose Carl didn't have a round bald head at school, did you? Uh, well, no. You, no. <laughs> did you have a nickname? Um, <laughs> not, not. Really, I mean, there was a lot of people on the estate that I grew up on. You know, nicknames are, are big things on estates and that. Yeah. Um, a lot of my dad's mates, right? What what their nicknames did was tell you about them. Do you know how I said about the Elephant Man's a good name? Yeah. Because, like, you know what you're going to get. If someone said, Elephant Man's popping around in a bit, it wouldn't <laughs> be a shock when he walked in. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> so so it, was, it worked in that sort of, uh, sort of thing, you know. So there was, uh, there was John the Screw, right? John the Screw. Yeah. Well, he had sex a lot or he worked in a prison? No, he had a DIY shop. <laughs> 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 so, so you had him. Right. right there was, uh, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. Yeah. Which is- yeah. I assume it's cause he was at the same IQ as you. Yeah. Or, or, or he was in a coma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was, there was, uh, there was my uncle, Tattoo Stan. Oh, right. right. Yeah. He had, he had like loads of tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh my right. god. The, the problem <laughs> was, because he did his tattoos himself, Oof. the ones on his left arm were really good. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was right handed. On his right arm, rubbish. Right? <laughs> um, so, so there was him. <laughs> ah, great. And there was, um, Jimmy the Hat. Jimmy the Hat? Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No he didn't. That, that's, that was the point there. That he, he never wore a hat. That's amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, 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 that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, innit? Here, that, here that comes is... Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, this was a craze in the, uh, was it late 70s, early 80s? Early 80s. And, uh, it was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly, I think it started off with like- Lorry drivers, isn't it? Yeah, truckers, yeah, because there was that, that thing from like about 1970, convoy. Was, convoy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I had one of them and my handle, I had, I had two Handle mean is your nickname, your yeah, name. Yeah, there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I had, I had a couple, I had, um, there was Pilkey 01, because right. like I said, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that. In Manchester, so I just thought, give it a number. If someone wants Pilky O2, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then, um. <laughs> that, is, that is people scrabbling. For, oh, I, want yeah, pil yeah. I want a Pilky O1. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'd, uh, I'd boxer boy. Because I thought that that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, don't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's boxer boy and that. Yeah. So. Just had them too, and I used to just go on there and 
pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just you just meet people, don't you? And you so don't meet people. You say, "What's your handle?" You go, "Box boy." What's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right, cheers. No, it's but ridiculous. then but then you'll say like, then you go, "Oh, uh, what's your twenty? What's that mean? That's where are you? Well, why don't you say where are you? Because just in case there's someone who's listening in who who you know you hear about this all the time, don't you? People listening, jotting stuff down. Oh, right. So, just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means, they're, they're out of the loop. They're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the- it's not a difficult code to crack, is it, yeah. if you're trying to track someone? It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like, I go, oh, he keeps saying that, what's your handle, and they come back with something else. I don't- <laughs> I can't work out what's going on. No, it's like- it's like anything, isn't it? That's what codes- that's what- you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You Set them up and that. Go on and tell me, tell me the code then. Reveal it long last to the world what yeah. these codes are. Right, so, yeah. what's your 20? Where oh, are you? This is better than the Enigma. Yeah. Right, now here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? Uh, does that mean how big's your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's, that's oh, how old Oh, what are you? time is it? No, how old are you? What, how old are you? Okay. Right. right. Uh, how many candles are you burning, of course? Yeah. So, what the, what's the answer come back? You go, uh... I'm 15. 14. Brilliant. That code, <laughs> that code, it, there's no one gonna work that out. There is no one gonna work that one out. So let's just play through this conversation. This is, is it, give us an example of how it worked. Right, so, um, so, so, you, you turn it on and that, and, and you start off, and, uh, there was something that you said at the start, like, uh... Hello! Just, do you Breaker, co- breaker. Yeah, breaker, breaker, do you copy, or whatever. Yeah. Then someone will go. What does yeah. copy mean? No, what his me, name was? Because I want to hear the fascinating conversations that Carl must have had. Yeah. And you go, uh, all right, it's a uh, boxer boy, yeah. What's your goes, twenty? What's your twenty? And you go, well, just uh, I'm in Manchester. In, in the flat. Oh, right. And yeah. they go, all right, yeah. How many candles are you burning? Mm. You go, oh, I'm thirteen. Oh. <laughs> so and uh, that's the end, is it? Then you sort of, then you might sort of uh, say, what, what, uh, what was it? it was something like, what, what am I burning? Right. He's in burning again. Confusing, but go on, yeah. Why am I burning? <laughs> 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 the bacon, because I'm busy talking to you, you twat. That's like, what's my power? What, what, uh, what strength am I coming in at? Oh, yeah. Because then you can tell if they're quite close to you, so if you're yeah. getting someone burning a one. Well, you've told them, you said, wait, what's your twenty? You go, I'm, I'm in Macclesfield Street. Yeah, but oh, then, right. But then Wonder you go- where they are. We've just told <laughs> you. Yeah, I don't but, know how far away they are. But then you go, oh, that's interesting, because uh, you're burning, f- you know, burning three. I don't normally get a, a three. <laughs> this is the least, <laughs> the least interesting hobby oh, you, you know could I, ever do. I wish you'd have kept a diary of this, because this has been fascinating. <laughs> now and again, someone will come in and go, uh, side on, right? What's that mean? And that means, like, there's someone sat there listening into Ooh. this chat and going, this sounds interesting. Yeah, no, it does Unlikely. <laughs> yeah. And they, they want to join in, so they sort of go, side on, you go, side on, bring it in, right? And they go, all right. <laughs> How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. Once you're that, 20. That's the close round again. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Once you're 20. <laughs> How many yeah. candles are you burning? Oh. And, I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make, made a note the first time so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. <laughs> Can I just confirm that you're burning 15? <laughs> It's that time again, do the jingle. Ow! Oh, Monkey you! Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna do a really good one. Okay, go. Okay. Oh! Chimpanzee's up! Monkey news, you fucking- Right, do you know it's, it's nearly time for the Winter Olympics again. Okay. Is it? Okay. They sort of come round every four years. Is it this year, is it? Yeah. And, uh, the, the, the last one that happened- Four years ago, yeah. There was a there was a bit of an incident. Oh no! Oh well, I'd know about this then because it would be well, it'd be well, big news because it's a it's a well known televised well known as well. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Do you remember any winners that were monkeys in any of the no, tournaments? Of course not. No. no. So yeah. so it's anyway, not going to be that because it wouldn't be true. No, yeah. So anyway, one one of the uh, popular events, um, bobsleigh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, it wor- you know, it works. Well, you it's need like four men. Is it four men or five four men? It's four, yeah. so it's definitely four men that you need, need on a four men. team. Is it, and two, and there's two team bobsleighers. But well. they're always men, is that right, Rick? Well, that, well yeah, they have to be. Yeah. Anyway, to be human, so. Human, humans. Well, it has to be humans, yeah. yeah it's okay. the Winter Olympics for 
Yeah, so, so, so just clarify, with the Winter Olympics, you can't have any animals taking part. No, and they, and they also, well, no, because they, they wouldn't be allowed them to. There's no way they could disguise it, because not only would they see it straight away, right, but they have blood tests. <laughs> right, okay. Which so, would show up. So they definitely know if it was well, a, anything non-human. Well, they have blood tests. It's impossible. It would be literally impossible to have anything other than a human taking involved part. in a bobsleigh team. Fine, okay, so carry on. So anyway, this, this country, I don't want to name them, because they try to shake off this, this sort of, you know, this bad news. Oh, it? yeah, and you don't know. And it's not true. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, the, the the country was doing really well in the qualifying stages. Oh yeah. But the problem was there was there was like two members mm. who were getting all like the press and stuff. Oh right, yeah. And one of them never got a look in, right? How tall was he? <laughs> anyway, so this one member was getting fed up because the the other two were getting all the press and what have you. So he said, I, "I'm not happy with this. Yeah, I'm jacking it in." Oh. So they were like, "You're joking? We've we've qualified. We're getting into like the main." race and everything. Mm. You can't leave us now. And he said, well, you could do it all on your own before, you know, you, the way you were acting and that, you didn't yeah. need me, so I'm going. Mm. So they were like, oh. Well, they, they need to replace him because there's a certain amount of people needed. So, uh, so anyway, so the clock's ticking, it's getting close to the big race and everything. Of course it is, yeah. They're like, what, what are we going to do here? The substitute what? they took with them. What are they well, going to do? Have, yeah. yeah, they would take the substitute, so get no, him they on. No, they didn't, they didn't have any of them and that, well, it's, you know, a lot of injuries and stuff. Or just get a mate to do it, just get a mate or a friend yeah, or, or the coach to do it, yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of responsibility on these people and, mm. you know, you won't want to let your country down and that, and they were like, what are we going to do? Get a waiter or anyone anyway, in the Anyway, the time comes to the race, seems to be three people on it. There appears to be three, okay, yeah. Um, they start off, they're whizzing round the track, faster than normal, they, they're beating their old records. <laughs> right, amazing. Because the new fella they've got, a little bit smaller. Ah! Oh. Right, is he so in, is he in the bobsleigh, or is he pushing? He's, he's in it. Oh, right. okay. Right. He's wearing a uniform and a helmet, though, we can't see what he looks on, like. He's got the kit on, he's got the kit on. Nobody knows who he is, but the country's do. loving it. Of course they They're do. like, well, it looks like we're gonna break all our records, you know. Good, it's good that they found someone new. Yeah. Bet the other fella who left, he's, he's sort of kicking himself, thinking, oh, I could've been part of this. Anyway. This wasn't a bloke that had very short legs and long arms, was it? Anyway, what happened is, they're whizzing round the track and what have you. Faster than ever, yeah. Faster than ever, and the press are like going, beating all records here. They mm. started taking photographs. <gasps> lot of flashing. Lot of flashes from the cameras and stuff. Right, of course. Suddenly, the bobsleigh goes a bit, sort of, mental, and whizzes off, off the track, right, into like all the tyres and stuff. That they have for protective. Oh, uh, they love tyres, don't they? Bobsleigh members. <laughs> some of them you can. Some uh, sometimes you can find them swinging in one, or maybe eating a banana. Ambulance comes rushing over and stuff. The other two members are looking pretty nervous for some reason. Mm. Oh, what are they doing? They're saying, "Look, um, don't take the helmet off because you know you can do more damage to the." the well, neck. don't tell the paramedics how to do it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they know their job. Yeah, they yeah, know yeah, their yeah, job. Yeah. So they were like, yeah. just, just, you know, and plus, you know, he doesn't, he, he came in at last minute to help us out, he doesn't want everyone to know who he is, he's, yeah. he's not after the limelight. Yeah. Like some of the members we used to have, but he just, yeah. he just was helping his country out. Yeah. Leave the helmet on. Anyway, they get him in the ambulance and stuff, the other two are looking a bit worried and what have you, they're Ugh. gutted, they lost the race. The little bloke, is the bloke not saying anything, is he not? He's, he's in the ambulance now. Is he not saying anything though? Anyway, word got out. Right, from one of the ambulance mm. drivers a few weeks down the line, once all the dust had settled on the Olympics and stuff, and mm. light news day and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was reported that one of the ambulance drivers said that, that on that, on that sort of dreadful night, when, you know, the country lost out on a medal in the bobsleigh, he sort of reported that there was a monkey in the back of the ambulance. People were like going, ah, you're joking, I don't remember you? this, I don't remember this you, at all. Not, you, well, this is it, you see, because they sort of swept it under the carpet oh, a little bit. Right. They were like, this bullshit. is crazy talk. Bullshit. This, bullshit. this is bullshit crazy again. talk. Once to talk, absolute shit. Where'd you is, get this, this from? This is crazy talk, right? It is but, crazy talk, and it's from the mouth of Carl Pilkington. And, and, but the, but the weird thing is, that backed it up, well, following week, um, there was a story of some people who visited the zoo, saw a chimp in a neck brace. <laughs> 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 and, uh, that's this week's monkey news. <laughs> Bollocks. Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be back. I'm here to tell you about Friday Night Comedies on Channel 4. There's three great comedies. New Green Wing, it's nearly ready. My name is Earl and the It Crowd. The great new comedy from creator of Father Ted. Get your ass to Mars. Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4. Switch it on. I'll be back. Who's in line, millimetre? Because they did a divorce. 
Well, that's the end of another podcast. Um, thanks very much from me, Ricky Gervais, with me, Stephen Merchant. Uh, goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. Right. And thanks again to those guys at Positive Internet who host this podcast, the world's number one podcast. Um, we'd also like to congratulate Steve Carell from uh, the American Office, um, who won a Golden Globe. Yes, well, congratulations, Steve, and obviously everyone involved with the American Office. And, um, <clears throat> for our American listeners, if you haven't checked out the American Office on NBC, it's dynamite. It really is a cracking show. I don't know if you're a fan of the original, but if you are, or even if you're not, just watch it. It's great. It gets better and better week by week. It, it's, it's absolutely, hilarious. it's absolutely brilliant. That's, uh, NBC, I think that's Thursday nights, isn't it? After My Name Is Earl. That's gotta be the first time a Golden Globe has been won by two different people for the same character. I think you're probably right, mate. Cheers. Hey, Good congratulations night. again for winning it all those years ago. Two. One, all right. two. I don't need to mention one. Two. Bye. Hello, welcome to the third in this, uh, new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merch. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. We've had loads of emails. Uh, thank you for those. Sorry we can't reply to them all personally, but, uh, keep them coming. Some interesting ones. There's one in particular here, uh, from a guy who says, I see there is less swearing now you're charging for the podcast. Dumbing down already, question mark. Yeah. Well, interesting. I don't know how that's dumbing down. Well, no, no, not swearing. Oh, that's interesting. Not swearing is dumbing down. And also, the fact that he's complaining that we're not swearing enough. <laughs> yeah. What sort of a cunt would bother writing that email? I don't know, mate. I don't know. But I know he's just some kind of fucking cocksucker. What have you got, Annie? Well, um, now, of course, a couple of weeks back, you gave the rather long-winded but fascinating, um, sort of brain teaser conundrum philosophical question about the, uh, heaven and hell doors. I know. And there's been a number of responses I to know, that. I know, Explain I know. Explain your error. Well, I got it, I know, I realised as soon as we put it out there that I, I should have said, uh, assume no prior knowledge. Otherwise, you can just say, hold up a cat and say, is this a dog? Or you can say, what's my name? But they don't know anything about you, that's the thing. They only know about their selves, and I should have said that. Yeah. You so know, are you willing to just now say that you've embarrassed yourself? Oh, I've embarrassed myself. I should have said, yeah. yeah, it's gotta be about, it's only about the, uh, you can ask questions. Well, do you know what? It's a bigger man than many that can admit that mistake. Or, a man that's banged to rights and obviously <laughs> caught out <laughs> yeah, and has exactly. no choice. <laughs> well, it's quite interesting to, to wade through the emails and find out uh, the kind of people that are listening, get a sense of the different listeners. And, uh, I know you, Rick, have met some of the big celebrity names that have listened to the show, and it's yeah. sort of because you've actually met them. Mm. Um, but it's, n now we've got celebrities who are just emailing themselves, e emailing in, just letting us know. This one is from a guy called Aaron. He says, my name's Aaron Douglas, and I play Chief Tyrol on TV's Battlestar Galactica. Oh, right. And he listens to the show in his trailer. Now, I don't watch Battlestar Galactica. I hear it's very good. Yeah. But it's I, nice I, to I know don't, that- I don't watch it. I don't watch any of those things, but, uh, uh, that's, uh, But, I, but uh, I'm nice, it's nice that- that Chief Tyrol, and for those of you that, that, that watch Battlestar Galactic, I'm sure that means something. But it's uh, nice that he got in touch. But I'm just thinking, who would you, in an ideal world, Rick, who would be your ideal listener, a celebrity listener? Um, well, I'm, it's not so much celebrities for me. I like the idea that uh, captains of industry or, or scientists or people actually doing something worthwhile are listening. That's what excites me, because they hear... You know, we've had a couple of emails from people who are doing, um, you know, PhDs and, and, uh, psychologists and that, and that, and that excites me more that these academics are listening. Or so, or, uh, I mean, who's the weirdest person you think that, who's got, who should have more time on their hands, you know, um, uh, uh you know, Stephen Hawking. Imagine Stephen <laughs> Hawking listening yeah. to this show. You know, he's putting together the, you know, the formulation for uh, the, the universe, but he's gonna listen to a little bit of monkey news from Carl Pilkington. Imagine uh, Stephen Hawking emailing us at podcast at rickygervais.com. I mean, that would just blow our minds, wouldn't it? I was, that I he's was, got time to do that. That he's got the inclination to bother doing that. He's, al he's always online, though, isn't he? He's always hooked up. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> well, he's always got that little computer on. Why not? Sure, that's one of the perks. You can just bung an email out whenever. <laughs> I'm not having a go, I just mean, that's, that's what I'm thinking, he's sat there with his little computer. I'd, 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 out of all the people in the world to have a chat with, I'd probably like to have a chat with him about space and that, because I can't get my head around it. Carl, what? you can't get your head around frozen foods. What a chance are you going to have with the universe? No, but just putting stuff out there, the, you know, I mean, it freaks me out. When I'm, when I'm lying there in bed at night, huh. and I think about how this world, on, on Friday, right, I was in, I was in bed, Suzanne, and I said, could the world fall, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like someone from Chicken Licking. Wow. I That's mean, a hell of a bit of pillow talk, that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't foreplay hell? <laughs> oh, God. But, but I'd like to sort of have a chat with him, because I reckon he could put it in a way that 
I could understand it. Oh, I wish an Inuit was listening. Did I yet. not tell you this? We- we've had an e- we had an email from an Inuit. Really? Yeah, yeah, I thought I'd mentioned this. Have we not mentioned this before? No. No, it was an email from a guy who said, uh, I think- well, I don't think he lives- he lives in Canada, I think, or somewhere else. I apologize for- if I'm getting that wrong. But I think he told- he said he was half Inuit, and he listens to the show. Half Inuit? Mm. See, that's interesting, because I think I'm so remote. I know I'm probably wrong now, but I think that those are so remote that I can't think where they're meeting people who aren't <laughs> That are also Inuit, yeah. Oh, and who's going, you know, other societies are going, I'll tell you what, I'm fed up, there's no action here, I'm going to the frozen tundra, I'm about to meet <laughs> someone there. Yeah. Where do they meet? Do they do online dating? What, what, probably a lot of online stuff. What do you put as hobbies? Fishing? <laughs> yeah. Is that skinning <laughs> stuff. <laughs> skinning <laughs> stuff, yeah. What or stuff to skin? Uh, you know, seals. Seals. Yeah, sure. That's about it, isn't it? Why are they hanging about round there? <laughs> Why are seals going, do you know what, it's cold, I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time, what have you, and I'm getting a club on the head. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? Yeah. So why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say like if, if seals died out, right? Would- would- would that be a problem? We've done this. We've been through this before, Carl. Everything has a knock-on effect. Even a seal? That sort of in-between something already, it's between a fish and a- <laughs> and, and a, a dog. dog. Isn't it? I knew you were gonna say dog. <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog. What do you think evolution does? Do you- I just, fish I, to I'll dog? I don't understand it, maybe we What do you mean it. it's between a fish and a dog? I'm just saying it's- It was a perfectly evolved mammal that re-entered the- the water, I imagine, and then got streamlined and it, I, I mean, it's between a fish and a dog. But why not have one and the other, why not have like, you know, you've got a dog, you've got a fish. No, it's not between middle, a fish yeah. and a dog. It's not between a fish and a dog. I don't know what between means. Well, I don't know what- This I, is it again about <laughs> saving everything all the time. What is it doing? <laughs> What's he doing? Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal and all that. What's it doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just ask that question. What's it doing? <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's between a fish and a dog. That that bloke, the Eskimo who emailed in, Inuit. would he would he be in a igloo thing? Probably not. No. Well, no, not. I mean, I don't think many igloos have got internet capabilities. So I don't know. I don't want to slag them off. But why aren't we saving them? Why aren't we? <laughs> Maybe those sort of... When you build it, leave a little hole. Yeah. That's where the. But yeah. those kind of igloo internet cafes. They, yeah, they the go there. Them. They all go to one <laughs> igloo. Yeah. yeah. But why? Why are they being left alone to live <laughs> like that when it isn't great? What? Well, we're always eager to help everyone in the world, aren't we? We're always like going, oh, look, them people are fed up. Let's build the city up for them. Give them a, you know coffee shop and all the rest of it. Mm. They're mm. being left Crappy alone. For them. They're being left alone in, in igloos and stuff. Yeah. Why isn't anyone saying- But they're not asking for help. They're happy. Well, they're not necessarily happy, but they're- they're- that's the way they live, that's where they choose to live. But why hasn't anyone just gone over and gone, do you know what, we can make it a bit better for you? Well, they have. I've never had a leaflet through the door saying help an Eskimo out, or, you know, clothing for Eskimos. There's m- the most remote people in the world, eventually, Someone gets them some whiskey and fags, and that's the end of them as a culture. It happens all around the world. There can be this idyllic, idyllic world where there's no stress, and soon they're, they're watching Come Dancing on telly, knocking back some <laughs> whiskey and smoking 40 fags but, a but day. But they're not moving, Surely dancing they? on ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but what, what I mean is like, Oxfam collects clothes for people in Africa, where it's warm, probably don't need a jacket, nothing for Eskimos, where it's, it's freezing where they'd be quite happy to get a jumper in the post. <laughs> right, okay. So what are you suggesting? To Africa we send, what, parasols and sun cream? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> mm. Out of all the people in the world to have a chat with, do you know, um, What's his face? That German doctor. Which one? The guy that, that displays the human body? Guns, someone. Guns right. Traven or something. Oh, right, yeah. Um, he's, he's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, just like the way, you know, he cuts stuff up, shows you how the body works and that. Sure. Um. And have you learnt anything from that? Um, well, I don't, is he, is he a proper doctor? Because it's just that he's always, I mean, I could cut a body up, I never see him sort of put it back together. 
<laughs> is, is anyone keeping an eye on him, sort of going, well, who is he, actually? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he is a proper doctor. Well, well, he's, he sort of, uh, sort of cuts bodies up on the telly and, uh, sort of goes, is, is how, like, intestines work or whatever. All right. And he just, uh, he holds them up, fills them with food, um, and he goes, look, they go fatter. And, uh, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't answer everything. Like, he doesn't say, I, I don't understand why the intestines have to be that long. I don't, I don't know why it just can't go from the throat to the belly, exit, straight dark line down, out the arse. You must know. Well, no, because uh, the, the way he, he dragged it out and it was, like, miles long. Yeah. Pointless. No, it's not pointless. It's just, just, have a, just have a straight, do you know no, what I mean? Straight it's to, down. It's to increase the surface area for absorption. So, a foot long intestine, you wouldn't absorb much food. Whereas, you go down, you know. Yeah, but just have more points in it where it has to go through some sort of filter. What are you talking about? Again, the evolution sort of worked this out for us. It really works. I don't think you're going to improve on it. In yeah, your mind, you some kind of what, some kind of kaplunk style No, but what, what, what I mean is that's probably that long because years ago they were eating dinosaur and that might have took a lot of indigestion or something. I don't know how, how chewy it was. It might have been quite fatty, dinosaur meat, and it needs to go through all that. Now, we're eating, like, yoghurt. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't need anything that, you know, is, is, is doing that much work anymore. All the food is mashed up. And in aura, right? <laughs> all her food is mashed. <laughs> right? She doesn't have to chew anymore. She's got teeth, but she doesn't need them. And that's how. how <laughs> She's got teeth, but she doesn't need them. No, but that's well, how we're doing it. intestines removed then. Well, no, but this is that what would I'm saying. our other problem, wouldn't we're, it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at on the internet, um, identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other. So they were like, what can we do, right? And one of the twins said, you have my arm, right? <laughs> and he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got, like, three arms. No, it's not true. <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> no, it's not what? true. What, um, for a laugh? They were born so what, so they didn't have no, just what, like, what doctor's doing this, then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say, this is what we want, and- No, 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 no. Doctors don't go, well, if he wants another arm and I'll take another. They don't- doctors don't do that. What sort of practice is this doctor going around and go, Dr. Jekyll? I mean, Carl, think of what you're no, saying. But we, Where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. <laughs> no, sign you're this. Paying. If you sign this, you might give my consent. <laughs> but, but we, you know, it is annoying. What do you think these doctors sit around doing, playing Mr. Potato? Or what, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just to do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do if someone wants it, and, and twins sort of, it can get you down, can't it? being a twin, because it's like... Sorry, what would this solve, though? I thought you said he, he, he gave one of them a, a bigger nose or a beard or two front teeth that would, uh, to make him look different, right? Not... I'll tell you what we could do. Go on. Um, would you like one arm? Go on, what are you thinking? Well, me three, you one, therefore not twins. <laughs> Novelty. I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of, there's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not gonna do that. Yeah, in Saw 2, not in the real world. No, they don't do things like all this. Alright, there's another bloke, right? I don't know the sort of full ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprise me. But <laughs> what he asked for, um, something happened to his, his, his tackle, right? Mm-hmm. His penis. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so he was at the doctors and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there, right? <laughs> so they were like looking at it going, yeah. Um, doctor, I don't know if he started like rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Looked down, he's thinking, <laughs> got an idea. Um, you know, you've got a lot of fingers, how many of them do you use? The patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers, sewn that on to where his, his tackle is. He's happy. Well, that's different though, isn't it? Well, that's where they've really taken different. tissue. <laughs> no, but they've, I assume they, they fashioned it into more of a knob than a finger. No, I still think it's there with like a little knuckle and a, uh, and you know. Fingernail? Fingernail and that one. Well, I'm, I assure you it isn't. They've probably used the finger as a basis to then build up some sort of uh, uh, knob-based no, organ. It, if, if you were doing that, use a sausage. 
I mean, why lose a finger for- Well, <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because your finger has your, your tissue, your blood type, and therefore would graft, uh, t- t- near your testicles. A sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal, okay, that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body. But- that's why they very rarely use any meat products yeah, in, uh, in, in surgery. surgery. <laughs> I know, yeah. Use, well, I mean, why not use a sausage? You're a mental case. I, I saw some bloke the other day in a meeting, and on his desk, he had a picture <sighs> of of his kids who were twins, right? And uh, they did, they looked alike, and he did that thing of dressing them the same, that, that sort of thing, that said, you know, annoys me, right? Um, and I sort of said, you know, you've only got a small desk, just have a picture of one of them. <laughs> 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 he looked at me like I was mental. That's weird, amazing. It? It's not. It's, I think it's a, you know, it's, it's sort of common you sense. You know what you've come up with there? No solution to anything. <laughs> That's what you've come up with there. Well, you've come up with the best no solution <laughs> I've ever heard yeah. in my life. It, or it's solutions to problems <laughs> that don't exist. No, yeah. because more room on the desk, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's no solution to a problem that didn't exist in the first place. Well done. There was a picture on the, when I was on the, the plane coming back from here, there was a picture of this new luxury hotel. It'll be, I think, $10,000 a night to stay there. It looked extraordinary. It was a hotel, and the best rooms were built under the water, under the sea. Wow. So it was an amazing, the best hotel we've ever seen, mm-hmm. but surrounded on all sides by glass, and out of it you could see the sea, the sharks, the fish. Mm, I don't think I'd like that. No? But that, again, that's just one of the hotels where it's, where it's over the top for over the top sake, isn't it? Like where they have twelve yeah. course meals. Well, just have two, but make them bigger, rather than dragging it out. And there's a, there's there's the first course. You know, a couple of you know snails. Yeah, it's just uh, for me all that is. Don't eat a snail. Don't have one snail. Have one. Eat one big tortoise. <laughs> If you want slow food, don't have uh, loads of little snails. Yeah, there's a giant tortoise. <laughs> Tuck into that. <laughs> Feeds ten. <laughs> but, 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 but it's what you were saying before. When you start having to take a risk with food, like the fish that can kill you mm. if you eat it, don't bother. Uh, there's apparently a delicacy in Japan, again, someone could verify this, where they eat a live little octopus. And it can stick to your throat, because it's obviously fighting for its life. I mean, good, again. You don't need to eat a live octopus. What are you thinking? How uh, cruel is that? Well, how fresh do you need your food? <laughs> it's just not, it's not, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, re- I always remember this story when I was a kid about, um, some bloke who, uh, a bit, bit sad, this story, but weird. He had, um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, uh, carry on with your life, right? It's not gonna be that good, but just carry on. Um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. He's like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, uh, you know, plenty of vitamins and stuff, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that. Anyway, he was, he was fed up because he loved his meat. Um, and his, his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day and thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up and that. All he wants is some meat, for God's sake, give him some meat. So she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of like steak and what have you. He can't believe it. He's like, oh, brilliant. Cheers for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> He's got the meat on his plate, just about to tuck in, and the cancer comes out from <laughs> his throat. <laughs> what? No, it's some. I know it sounds really weird, but it's something that, that I was told about years ago when I was growing up. What are you talking about? It was just some some bad illness, some cancer thing, and it sort of it was it was coming out, waiting for the meat. It was. It was <laughs> what? It was sort really? of dying again. It, I get a lot of your medical. Uh, knowledge is from is uh, from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell, it was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. so it was a, it was a uh, it was the animal. It was the little animal cancer. That's why what he are wasn't you allowed to eat about? meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's of... sitting there. So it's actually sitting there in the throat. Why? I'll tell you what I'd have done if I'd have had some cancer in my throat. I go, <coughs> there you go. Rid of that. What are you talking about? So what happened? Uh, he choked to death on this thing and the wife was like, oh, I shouldn't have given him the meat after all. Just That's listen a bollock to you, story. To it's, it's all, there's loads of weird stuff like that there that is. happens in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you, if you, if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers and they're, they're all over the plate. Yeah. And you have to be asked to leave the restaurant. <laughs> the other thing that I was told when I was younger about medical stuff and that, um. Who's telling you this stuff? My mum. My mum told me about it. 
Jeez. Cause she always says to me dad, that, cause he has too much meat and she's always like, you know. Remember the- The, the father with the- and he goes, Yeah, the uh, troll in his throat. throat. But, um, <laughs> me gran, uh, she had something, uh, wrong with her eyes. And they sort of took them out <laughs> and they were just dangling on her cheek. And she could still see through them. They were operating on her. Well, yeah, you would have, yeah. They sort of say- No, 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 she wouldn't have been conscious though. No, they were then. Cause oh, it's yeah. something to do with the eyes and it's like- if No. You, no, it's no good operating on eyes if your eyes are asleep. What do you mean, your eyes are asleep? It's like a heart, isn't it? You want to keep them awake. No, so you, keep what do you mean open. you want to keep them awake? What, heart surgery is for blokes awake? Stop talking shit no, what, all your life. What I mean is they don't stop the heart. They, they, they sort of- they don't stop your heart because it kills you. Yeah, I know. So what I mean is it's like the eyes, they wanted to make sure they were working. So the, the only way to do it is keep her awake. No it's not, because you don't know whether they're working or not. You can't see what she sees. What do you think, it, it, you, you can plug something in and see what people are thinking. It was something like no, that. No, no, it wasn't something like that. Well she could see. She no, said she it was couldn't. really weird. How like, you know, you can see. She could see her knees. <laughs> <laughs> that is bollocks. Oh, Jim Barnsley, that is only on and written it down, the little... That's the jingle for Carl's Diary, uh, excerpts of which we read each week. Get straight into it. A band from the Conga have won the best newcomers in a Radio 3 competition. They use pots and pans for instruments. It says that the Conga is a poor, sad place. So why do people do that happy dance at the end of parties called the Conga? Right, one <laughs> is the Congo. <laughs> There's no place called the Conga. <laughs> <laughs> they come from a place called the Congo. <laughs> where, where, where do you come from? Uh, Okie Koki. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible place that we don't know whether we put our left leg in or our right leg in. Uh, sometimes we shake it all about. No, we're but, not sure if we should. But um, <laughs> Conga. <laughs> Fucking hell, you're such a. Went into the gadget shop today. It's full of stuff that we don't need. Gadget used to be a good word that made you think of James Bond with all his gadgets. The best thing I could find in the shop was a clock that ran on potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely going backwards. I agree. Well, what's the- who cares about that? A, a, you know, a little electrical impulse, so what? Had a night out with old schoolmate. Found out about more of the other lads I went to school with. One is living underground. <laughs> He's living underground. Not like a mole. Do you yeah. mean he's got a basement or do you mean he digs a hole every night? My mate went to visit him and he said it's all like it had been raining really heavily and that. And it's all the rain's running what in. What do you mean he went to visit him? He went down here? What's that? That's an hole in the ground. Yeah, come in. Come he, just, see. he just said, oh, come, come round and see us. And he's, he's living underground. What do you mean he's living he, he, underground? He wanted to be in the army but was turned away and that's the closest thing you can sort of. How is that similar to the army? Oh, that's exactly like the army, yeah, yeah, where they teach you trades and, uh, you know, engineering know. and he's, flying. He's happy, he's happy down there. He said it was really muddy and what have you. He said he won't be going back to visit him. What's he got down there? Just, just stuff, just like a sleeping bag, a lamp. He that's dug, he, he's dug himself a subterranean cave. Near my old infant school, they knocked it down because it was like a wreck. You'd, you'd be in the class and you could <laughs> lean on the wall. Yeah, and subsidence. And would go through it and stuff. And um, they knocked it all down, and I think that's when he was at his most happy, this bloke. I believe this though. I believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> shock me. When the, the tales I've heard of horses in houses and big-headed kids with webbed hands and feet, uh, and uh, you know, and him, um, I, I believe that someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. That isn't bizarre to me. That's to that's <laughs> you spent to far too long with him. If that now you're just happy to accept. I totally accept that. I- I'd be surprised if I walked round uh, where he lived that there weren't more people living in holes. <laughs> his dad wanted to throw his budgie on the fire. True. His budgie died, his dad said let's throw it on the fire. I mean, his mum- what did your mum do when your budgie died? She just was worried about the other bird that was left, so she made it a bit of company by getting a rock, getting a feather off the dead budgie, sticking it on the rock, put, putting it in the cage. So, a, a man living in a hole <laughs> it's not is unusual. not that bizarre. Right, carry on. I read me science magazine. Some things I learnt from the science magazine. Number one, space is running out of space. We should stay out of the sea cause shark attacks are up. Yeah. Probably four a year now. <laughs> we, well he just says here, we should just stop going in the sea. Yeah. There's no need for it. Exactly. Why is there no need for going in the sea? 
just because there isn't now, is there? We've got loads of land. So just, you know, one or the other. We walked out the sea. Now, this is what I mean about going backwards. <laughs> getting back in it again. <laughs> we came from the sea originally. Now we're going back in it. Don't go in it. Unless you're in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> the rules. The rules according <laughs> the to rule, Carl Pilkington. The rules of Carl Pilkington. Oh, God. Did the podcast and then went for a walk round Manchester Square. Years ago, a woman lived round there who had a head like a pig. She was known as the Pig Woman of Manchester Square. <laughs> that made me think if there were other pig-headed women knocking about London. Do you know what I mean? Why, why was she nicknamed that? Why not just the Pig-Headed Woman? That suggests to me like there was loads of pig-headed women and that's the one of Manchester Square. <laughs> right. Well, no, it was more to do with identifying her, not amongst other pig of the women, but go, have you seen the pig woman of Manchester Square? I.e., go down there and see the pig woman, it's in Manchester Square. What happens if she's walked off from there, though, and you go, well, no, but I saw one on New Cavendish Street. <laughs> no, well, she'll, woman? she'll always come back if you rattle the feet. Watched <laughs> a film about Hitler. Didn't watch all of it as it was subtitled. Can't be doing with that. Asked Suzanne if cinemas are full of deaf people when they're showing subtitled films. She said, shh, I'm trying to watch it. I said, what do you mean, shh? It's subtitled, I can make as much noise as I want. Yeah. She's you, a lucky, lucky woman. <laughs> you must be a joy to watch a subtitled film. I mean, the concentration is, is, is up there already. I mean, uh, it, it is hard to concentrate. It's not as easy as when you're hearing it, because, mm. you, you know, you, you read things, but, you know, it's possible. If you had a, a, a buffoon going, I'm just gonna sit here and make as much noise as I want, what's the point <laughs> of that? Yeah. What is the point of that? I mean, it's possible, but why do- do that in a cinema. Just walk into a subtitled film and go, right, everybody? Let's all do the conga. Well, yeah, or during, during ballet. You know, I mean, ballet, they're just dancing. You don't need to listen to the words. Just have yeah. a conversation. We're having our bathroom done. The bathroom man was round at nine this morning. We weren't allowed to use the shower because it all had to be bone dry before we could use his waterproof filler. Not that waterproof, then. <laughs> <laughs> Went for a brew with Ricky. We talked about monkeys and how they are closer to humans than they are to apes and how bees will drink cider to get off their heads. Now and again there is a bee that lets the drinking get in the way of the work and other bees sting it to death. Blimey. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, uh, there are, there, there's bees, they love a drink, um, and, uh, they can, they can just, they, they will, uh, drink pure alcohol. They drink 100%, they drink ethanol. You know, I don't know why. They love getting off it and they fall down and they're drunk, right? A bee can take in the equivalent of like 20 litres of wine, right? But some bees, get uh, addicted in the, in the same sort of percentage as human addiction, like 10% of bees, they can't get enough of it. They take uh, ethanol, they take cider apples and that. And then when they get back to the hive, they go in a bit pissed and they've got guard bees and they go, come on, we've all had a drink. Bounces. Yeah, they sort of are, right? And they push them away and they push them away again. Then the next time they go, right, I've had enough. And they give it a good hiding. And uh, Carl couldn't get over this. I saw his face. But I, I knew that he was thinking of that bee with sort of like eyes rolling round his head, a little bit belligerent with his jacket on backwards. Yeah. You know, and the bouncer going, come on, come on, son, we've all had enough, let's move away, <laughs> yeah. move away. You're not coming in, all right? You're wearing trainers. Yeah, you know, you're wearing, you're wearing three pairs of trainers <laughs> yeah. and, uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of it, you know. But what I did find out, because I went, went home and went on the computer trying to find out about drunk bees knocking about, um, they're not actually meant to fly. It's only because they don't know. Fly. Well, no, but they're, they're, if, if they were told that you're not actually designed to fly, they, they wouldn't bother. No, th this is the, this is that thing that goes around, that aerodynamically, on the, th on the face of it, looking at the size of the wings and the, and the, and the body proportions and everything, that it, that it's a surprise that they can fly, okay? It's not that no one's ever told them they can't, and as soon as someone tells them you're not meant to fly, they all fall out of the sky going, oh, what are we doing? Like in a cartoon. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's something about the confidence in that. At the moment, nobody's saying There's no to do with the confidence. There is no such thing as confidence in bees. A bee never loses its nerve. That's not why it drinks. Because what are you drinking for? I'm just not confident anymore. There's no point to turn to the bottle. I can't go up there again. You're an idiot. Well, it's that time, isn't it? What? Rockbusters. Oh, yes, the time that no one looks forward to. Uh, Too fancy that, Rockbusters. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, uh, gave you three clues last week, three cryptic clues. Mm. Um, some initials of a band or an artist you emailed in. Mm. Uh, what Rob, again? Rob Arden got it, right? Oh, nice work, Rob. So, well done. Mm. Um, the three clues, the first one was, uh, RP for the initials, uh, and the clue was 
steal that woman's flower. Right? Yeah. So that was a cryptic clue. The answer there is, is Rob Erplant. Rob Er- Rob- Rob Erplant. Rob, Rob Erplant. I don't know who that is though, is it? There's no Rob, artist called Robert that's, Plant. That's like Robert Plant. Robert, 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 no, no, Robert, Robert Plant yeah, is his name. Yeah, but you don't say that, you sort of go, oh yeah, I'm into it. Well, you do uh, say it. You have you got the, uh, <laughs> you know, it means like... Robert Plant. Robert Plant. They wouldn't go, what? <laughs> I don't know who, ro ro I don't know who, are you saying rubber plant? Uh, the second one. What are you one, saying there, Carl, though? The second one was, uh. It doesn't work. The initial was B, and then that was keep whacking the cooker with a stick, right? Yeah. Uh, didn't have to be a stick, we pointed that out, just keep whacking the cooker. Keep whacking yeah. the cooker, yeah. Uh, that was B, that was B oven. Beat oven? Yeah. I don't know who that is, either. So is that a group? The <laughs> beat oven? Is that the Beatles? Who's the beat ovens? Classical sort of stuff, Beethoven. Beat oven. No, you said, you said beat it, Again, though, they got it's bait. Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm just saying though, they, no, they no, got no, it. No, 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 it's bollocks. Oh, Rob because Harding got it. No, no, no. Beat oven yeah. is not Beethoven. They got it. Do you understand? The last one, the initial was M, right? Uh, I, don't, I just want to know who Robber Plant is. Don't, don't be worrying about Robber. No. Because it's not uh, a nail. I've it, 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 not the one in Le Zeppelin, is he? So M was the initial. The clue was Venice. It's, it's all water, isn't it? How would you describe it? There's, there's hardly any land, right? So uh, canal. if there's hardly any land, Right, it's more water. What sort of water would you get? Right, Wet. and then then what? Wetville. Wetville. No, but just like water that in Venice. What sort of water is it? It's, it's sort of muddy. Right? Um, no, no. Muddy waters. No, but how would you describe Venice? What's the what's the um? If there's more. But what's the what's the uh, initial again? M. If M. there's more, if there's more muddy waters. If there's more sea than land, mm, what would you say? Would you say? Would you probably say there's. Sort of more, more of it is C, isn't it? More, more, more is C. C. More is C. More is C. More is C. More is C. So that's, that's more the answer. I don't Morrissey. know that who is. is that? Morrissey. 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 So, well done to, uh... <laughs> that's the worst one you've ever done! Well it's ridiculous. Done to, uh, that's really the worst ridiculous. you've ever done. It's ridiculous. Well more is C. Right, if, they, if, they, if they're that mm. shit, don't do it anymore. So, well done to, uh, Robert Harding. He's in, he's in <laughs> London. <laughs> Right, this week's, there's another three, Oh so, god, uh, we haven't even come to this week's, I forgot oh, that. Oh fuck, this is, this is the, this is the last time we do this, Monkey News back next week. Oh. No. Yeah, well this is shit, this is pathetic, really, it, it's making you look a bigger moron than you are, more is C, Robert and Plans, they don't fucking work. Let's they, do Monkey News. They're getting news. them right, they're getting them right though, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? Bit of shit. Right, uh, the first one, the initials ND, right, ND, who is it? You sing songs on that, right, ND. Uh, the clue, that Jamaican fella doesn't want anything. <laughs> so you've got to sort of imagine, oh, why is it a Jamaican fella? Yeah. Right? That Jamaican fella doesn't want anything. N-D. Second one, the initial is E. I ask him to pass me the ball by using their head. Right? It's a band or an artist again. I ask him to pass me the ball by using their head. And the last one, T-R, the initials, T-R, He's got the woolly ones, but I've got the ones that run and charge at you. What I forgot? What? He's got the woolly ones, but I've got the ones that run and charge at you. So what? What I forgot? And what's the T R initial? T R for the uh, for the initials? Right. Email in podcast at rickygervais dot com. We just pick a winner, send you some stuff. That's Rockbusters. Right. Well, that's uh, end of another half hour of. Could I just say this? Absolute. Drivel. Yeah, I, I mean, think. really more than ever. I mean, I mean, can I be honest with you now, Rick? I'm embarrassed to put my name to this week's show because the amount of twaddle there's been. It's spoken. my name on it, which is the embarrassing. Yeah. But you know, let, let's let's take the the village idiot uh, that is Carl Pilkerton. It's his fault because I realised not only he's got an head like an orange, he's got a fucking IQ of an orange. <laughs> <laughs> so it's goodbye from me. I'm not saying my name. Goodbye from Steve Merchant. Don't make, well, why are you mentioning well, okay. my name? Don't mention but my mostly, name. Mostly goodbye from Carl Pilkerton. Mainly his fault. Welcome to number four, season two, the Ricky Gervais show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, hello, and Carl Pilkington. Right now, there's a lot of talk, Carl, that I bully you. Okay, you know it's for your own good. I'm trying to train you, aren't I? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because, and no disrespect, okay, you are a, what I would call a stupid idiot. Well, can I just ask, because I've, there's been an awful lot of emails that have said, will you and Steve please, uh, stop 
calling Kyle stupid. Now, right. they say, oh, he doesn't just, just, doesn't justify calling him stupid. Now, I don't know what part of injecting a 76-year-old woman in the head so that she lives her life backwards well, couldn't be considered stupid. Okay, then listen. Right, I'm gonna, I've found some things that I think will interest you, and I want your first thoughts on these, okay? Now, these are facts that I've sourced. Mm. Okay. What's the, what's the actual topic? Well, you love animals, don't you? You're interested in animal facts. Some of them. I don't, mm. I don't love them. They, they, some of them fascinate me and stuff. But a lot of them also get on my nerves. I don't know how an animal can get on your nerves. They just, they just do. Sometimes you sort of just think, what are they doing here? What, what are they offering anyone? Right. See, I'm worried that these facts will annoy you now, but they're meant to fascinate you and... Okay. No, I, I think anything's good as long as it gets you thinking. It doesn't matter what opinion you have of something. Yeah. But as long as it gets a, a reaction. Okay, then, here you right. go. Um, there's a frog, Carl. Just a little frog, a poison arrow frog, that contains enough poison to kill over a thousand human beings. Why is it that annoyed? It's not annoyed. Well, why is it going about killing a thousand people? No, it has the potential to. It has enough poison, it has enough toxin in it that could kill a thousand human beings. But does it, it, does it need that? Whereabouts is this? Where's it living? In the rainforest, I think. And does it need that sort of power? Is it in that much, is it, is, is it getting threatened a lot, is what I mean? Well, no, because it's saying, don't come near me, and it shows it with its colours, it's got the colours that say, it doesn't want to be eaten, it doesn't want people to chew a bit, right, and go, oh, I'm an idiot. It's saying, look at my colours, don't eat me. Don't, you don't want to come near me. But then why give it bright colours? Because now it's standing out. Yeah, and it's going, don't eat me. Yeah, but make it a colour that fits in, like camouflage. Why, why make it orange? Of course it's going to stand out and then they'll attack it and then it'll turn around and bite them and kill a thousand men or whatever. No, it doesn't bite, it's the fact that if you were to eat it, you would die. Yeah, but who's, I mean, who's going to eat it? Well, things that eat frogs. The French. <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah. go, Sapper Bleu! <laughs> you have killed me and 999 <laughs> of my friends! But why, why is everything, like, surviving like this, though? I thought it was all about survival of the fittest, not yeah. the one who looks the hardest. Well, but survival of the fittest is whether you're chosen or not by nature. No, but I I'd survive if I could go about killing a thousand men at one bite. It's not fair. It doesn't bite. It's well, whatever, it, if it licks you or whatever. But no, it it, not if it licks you, if you lick it. Well, I'm not gonna lick it. It's not, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I don't, I will not be licking a frog. So it's, it's of no danger to me. So I could still kill it, and there's no chance, at no point am I gonna lick a, a little frog's head. Not when it's alive or when it's dead. <laughs> I love the fact it's all about you. It's all about how it relates to you. And he's annoyed that they're, like, they're getting away with something. He doesn't, he doesn't like any sly animals. He doesn't like animals hiding. He doesn't, he doesn't want animals. He doesn't want animals um, killing things. Then he wants them to kill things. He doesn't know what he wants. When they say survival of the fittest, they don't mean that, say, lions have been working out in a gym. It means, you the fittest, it means the fittest gene pool, and the fittest gene pool is a gene pool that's still around. That's all it is. Yeah, if it's here, it worked. I'll try and explain to you. The other day, a slug is as evolved as us. It's not, though, is it? It is. It's you not. think evolution is aiming towards Miles being away human? Miles we are. What? It's nowhere near what we're like. But, but you're looking at it in terms of, like, th this evolution has a will. It doesn't have a will, it's chosen or it's not chosen by nature. A slug uh, got it right. A slug has it got hasn't. it as right as- what do you mean it hasn't? Well, what was it like before it got it right? <laughs> <laughs> but I think you think, Carl, that, that evolution is moving towards some kind of super being. Perhaps we're like the most advanced so far, but that one day we'll also have wings- I agree with and that. Superman no, type powers. No, but something can happen in nature. There could be something like- there could be less light, there could be more light, there could be meteor storms. There, there could be a th there could be something that happened in nature, right? An external force, which means it- 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 the paradigm goes back to naught. So then something that very unlikely would be the last thing to survive. There could- you know, we don't know what's gonna happen. I still don't think you've got the concept. It's one of the simplest concepts- it's, it's one of the simplest models. This is why Darwin's a genius. But you think that everything, slugs, 
cats are all somehow, they, their, their ambition is to be like us, to be human, or to, to have the attributes but, like us that they can speak, they can talk, they can think, only, they can act. Only because... They don't. Yeah, but only, I only think that because when you see people with these pets, lizards, cats, whatever, they treat them like the humans. So I think if you do that enough times, they're going to start getting familiar with Again, certain... Planet of the Apes. No, yeah. I'm talking, of the Planet say like of the Apes. you, say like you with your cat, the way you talk to it, you give it a little cheeky massage and that when it's stressed out. And no, 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 you made that up that it's it was stressed cat. out. It's I'm just playing with my cat, right? If anything, the, the, the cat is to de-stress me. So you're talking to your cat, Rick. Is it answering back much? How are the conversations going with your cat? Well, it's, I have more intelligent conversations <laughs> with my cat than I do with yeah, him. Yeah, here's one, right? Me, we, when my gran died, right, um, she, she had this rubbish dog, right, and that's all we got left. Uh, it's like this little poodle. <laughs> that was, it was rubbish, right? Right. Um, it was called Fluffy. And, like, my gran looked after it in a way that it was treated like a human. Do you know what I mean? Had a little coat on when it went out and all that. Um, anyway, so she died, we get left it, my dad's like, oh, bloody hell, right? Uh, before you know it, it only took about a month. It was a wreck. Because we, we weren't sort of bathing it the way she bathed it. We let it out if he wanted to go out. He got covered in oil, it used to go under the car and everything, so it's, it went from looking like this fluffy, you know, poodle, to just being a bit of a wreck. He got it by a car, it ran sideways, like a crab, and all that. <laughs> In the now, course of how long? A month? Probably about two, two months or something. Yeah. Now, so it went from being over-treated to just being treated like a dog. Yeah, but a dog, dog isn't, uh, you know, is not a, a indigenous species anywhere. We sort of bred those from, you yeah, know, but jackals change it, all or, and I'm wolves. Is change it, take away the dog thing, give someone a frog and they'll still overdo it. They'll be trying to treat it like, if you had a frog, I mean that lizard thing you've got. Salamander. It's it's still sort of treated as part of the family, even though well, it's not. Nothing, as, I mean, how is it treated as part of the family? Just the way you know it's looked after that big area that it's got to itself. We, we stick it in a case and feed mm, it a cricket now and again. It, how is that like one of the family? It doesn't matter because it's in your flat. <laughs> it is in Carl's family. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's in your flat, in it, and it's sat in that corner. I just mean, as time goes on, yeah. things, things get educated as they get older. How old's that lizard? You don't. How old is it? About 15 years old. Right. Now it knows more now than it did when you got it because it's been in those surroundings. It's had its eye on things. Well, no, it's what do you think it knows? What do you mean it knows more now? They act on instinct. What, 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 what does it learn? It knows when it hears the noise of a plastic case being unwrapped that yeah. a cricket's gonna fall down any second. Yeah, That's well, all it, it knows. Yeah, but it didn't know that in the jungle. So it's already one up. What else has it learned? <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's know. 15, so presumably it listens to a lot of Linkin Park, <laughs> goes on the internet a lot. <laughs> no, but do, do, do you know what I mean? You've already proved your point. It's like that fella who kept hitting the dog on the head with a stick. Right. I've Pavlov, been... at no point did he hit a dog on the head with a stick. But he kept doing it and eventually the dog went, I'm sick of this. And what <laughs> <wandered laughs> off, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> yeah. there. Brilliant. Why didn't you write up his experiments? Because he, he did it a little bit different to that. I, l I love that. Do you know what I'd like to do? A program where you rewrite, you paraphrase someone's theory. So Pavlov's first. We could do, uh, um, Freud. Give us, you know, do, what do you know about Sigmund Freud? The father of psychoanalysis. Right, come on in. I don't know anything on him. Well, look him up. Educating Carl. That's your next week, right? Let's do another podcast next week. Then they'll get an extra one free, the people who paid for it, right? Uh, we're gonna hear about Sigmund Freud, okay? Mm. Here's an interesting fact. If the, f the frog annoyed you, this might annoy you. A blind chameleon will still change colour to match its surroundings. You're aware that the chameleon can... Yeah, whatever it, whatever it sits on. Yeah. But then what, what happens when you put one of them on a mirror? <laughs> no, do, does it get stressed out or what? What's, what's it copying? <laughs> well, it probably doesn't need to copy anything because it looks at itself and it goes, oh, look, looks like that. It's brilliant. God, that was fast. That's the fastest I've ever done that. That is brilliant. So they, they can go any colour. There's nothing. You can put them on anything and they'll go to the thing. I, w I, I don't want you to have a chameleon because you'd just be trying to see what it could and couldn't do. Try and catch it out. I oh, know, yeah. Pop it on some tartan. But yeah. again, say like, say like the frog thing, right? Pop it on the telly. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> Why does the chameleon need that skill of copying a colour? Because at the end of the day, that lizard, chameleon, whatever, that's, that's mainly sticking in, in the woods, isn't it? 
by trees, by grass. Right. Why can't it just stay green? That's all it needs. That those colour changes are only for camouflage, aren't they? I don't know. Some of them are for attraction. Some of them to show moods, anger. No, I, I just think we're encouraging them. You see, maybe this is evolution or whatever. But at the end of the day, because they can change colour, they're wandering out of their area. They can be wandering about, you know, through a car park and everything, just because they'll go, well, I don't want to get seen. Change to the colour of co concrete. Yeah. Whereas, or into the colour of a Fiat Punto. But they should just stay green. Stay green, right? Stay in the woods and stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> I love this public information for chameleons. <laughs> Words of advice for chameleons. <laughs> oh God! Stay green. Stay in the woods. <laughs> stay safe. Good night. Oh God! Why are there blind chameleons around? I'm assuming that the blindness has no impact on the the colour change. Presumably, is an automatic. It must be. But then that's not going to wander about much anyway, is it? If it's blind, it'll probably stay where it is. So it doesn't need to keep changing. If you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean, no. I never do, though. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, the only time a turkey whistles is when it panics. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas time, then. Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? It goes from one extreme to another, doesn't it? You've got a frog who's going mental. It's not going mental. Killing thousands of people. No, that's not- That's got that sort of power, then you got a turkey who's whistling for help. <laughs> <laughs> you think that you should redress the balance a little bit? You wanna give- what would you do? Give the frog the ability to kill 500 and the turkey 500? Um, I don't think you should be killing- uh, I reckon 10. 10 because- You've made your point with 10, haven't you? Do you well, think that he's got a thousand in his lifetime, like he's got a thousand to kill? I don't think you understand. I just think- He doesn't really kill a thousand people. That- that- that stat is about that if you were to boil up a frog, decant of the poison, there would be enough poison to split between a thousand people and kill them. It doesn't mean someone goes, Frog, you have the power to kill one thousand people in your lifetime. Choose them wisely. <laughs> but I just think if it needs that sort of power- Power? It should be fighting evil? Well, it's not- <laughs> <laughs> It's- it's knocking about the wrong area, isn't it? If it's under that much danger, move. <laughs> <laughs> As ever, thanks very much indeed for all of your emails. Podcast at rickygervais.com. Uh, it's lovely to hear your feedback. Many of them obviously responding to the inanity that Carl has spouted over the various shows. Uh, and a lot of people just want your opinion on things. They just throw things at you. They just want to know what you make of them. Right. For instance, um, are you familiar with uh, multiple dimensions? The idea of multiple dimensions. Go on. Well, you know, there are theories which state that we are just in one of an infinite number of dimensions. And in all of those other dimensions, every possible variation that you could imagine exists. So there is a Carl in one of those other dimensions that's both man and woman. There is a Carl that's got hair. There is a Carl that's got a penis growing out of his face. <laughs> there is a Carl, there is every conceivable Carl. And this is a scientific theory, not science fiction. It's a scientific theory. Uh, uh, is it a planet? No, it's a multiple dimension. It's another dimension that exists in parallel with the dimension we are living in now. So we're living in our dimension, and right next to us, intangible, unable to communicate with it or touch it or interact with it. So there I'm are still multiple dimensions. doing what I'm doing now, but I'd be sat here with a knob on me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly in one the of same them, life. Exactly the same life. But with the knob on the head. Now, because there's an infinite number of dimensions, there's another one where you're not doing this. You're you're sat there with a knob on your head, but you're talking French. Why is this happening? <laughs> there is one, Carl, and I. This is a fact that you're talking French with a knob in your mouth. <laughs> exactly. And no one can make his head to tell of what you're saying. No, because it's 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 pigeon French anyway. <laughs> exactly. But who came up with this? Well, it's because there are phenomenons that happen at the subatomic level that people are explaining as being that, for instance, atoms or very, very small molecules are disappearing and reappearing. And people are <laughs> saying- <laughs> I love the fact that we're trying to dissect this theory and you said very, very small molecules. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. <laughs> atoms, neutrons. And is there anything that we look at on this planet that we go, that's weird? But it would fit in normal in another dimension. It's just so I happened. I think you. I think no, but say, say like the elephant man. Yeah. Was he all right? But he was just in the wrong dimension. <laughs> <laughs> I love
that well, it's an interesting thought. I mean, of course, there is one dimension that where where you are the ruler of the world, and yeah. everyone thinks you are a genius. Yeah, I hate that though. <laughs> I don't. I just don't understand why we're worrying about this, though. No, nor do I. Well, it's we're not worrying about it. Well, they are because scientists and that are sat in a room somewhere going, "What's going on? What's what's happening in the other dimension?" Uh, but we can't get to it, can we? So well, that's why no, I don't it's worry about it. I, I agree with Carl. It's, it, it's largely pointless. It's academic. It's it, 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 it's like it's like when you, you a person does um, philosophy and the first lecture he ever goes to, he comes out and uh, he goes in the student union. He goes up to uh, someone who's doing <laughs> English or science and goes, "Oh, right, mate, that table's not there." They go, yeah. "What?" They go, "The table's not there." He goes, "What? How do you know?" They go, "What? What are you talking about? The table's not there." They go, "Isn't it there? Can you feel that? Is <laughs> it there or not?" And his beret falls off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not a big um, chat up line as well when you've got a little bit of philosophy and you try to spout off. Because of course I told you before, haven't I? When I was doing a school play, and uh, there was a girl and I was trying to crack onto her, but I was going through my sort of you know fifth form phase of sort of reading Catherine the Ryan, all the rest of it, rebelling against the system, and uh, I thought, well, she's gonna she's gonna find me appealing if she realises how smart I am. Mm. So I... Can I just ask you one thing? Yeah. Is this before or after the phase when you thought a bow tie would sort you out? This was before the bow tie phase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a phase, I should say, for new listeners where I, for about six months, wore a bow tie because I thought it made me look sort of like I was from a Jeeves and Worcester book. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was very urbane and sophisticated. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we were doing the school play, and, uh, there was one point where everyone was hanging out in one of the rooms, <laughs> music rooms, getting changed, <laughs> joking, laughing, cracking onto each other, right? I was sat in the room next door, empty room, on my own, right? Reading Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, the, uh, sort of, kind of, you know, populist philosophy book from the 70s. Just sat reading that, in the hope that she would, uh, walk in the room, see me, think, my God, he's obviously wise, and presumably, you know, get off with me. Um, must have sat there <laughs> for about an hour and a half <laughs> before anyone came in, and, uh, <laughs> she came in eventually, and, uh, I thought, ding dong, this is it. She came in and said, have you seen Martin Wells? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I think he might be next door. She disappeared again. I gave her another 15 minutes on the hope that she'd come back. She didn't. I went in the next room. She was getting off with Martin Wells. Oh, no. Because he'd been dancing. With, he'd been dancing around with no trousers on. <laughs> <laughs> so, all I'll say is, there's a, a less a valuable lesson learned. Um, oh, oh. I think this was the same girl. I was at a party once, and <laughs> I was just going to impress her, and um, someone lit some joysticks. Uh, you know, just gonna you know, give it a kind of hippie vibe, right? And I didn't know what joysticks were. I thought they were some kind of drug, like <laughs> cannabis. So, so <laughs> these joysticks are like, and I, and I started, I started going because I thought we were all supposed to be getting high on these joysticks. I started going, whoa, oh man, these joysticks are. They're really doing me in, man. And, and everyone said, what do you mean? I went, oh, they're good stuff. <laughs> it's just good shit. And, and they, and they said, what do you mean? Joss sticks? You're not, it's not, they're not drugs. They're just, they're some incense. And I went, yeah, I know. I'm just saying they're, they, I'm just saying they smell great. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, Martin Wells on the table, <laughs> trousers down, yeah. everyone just throwing in money. Yeah, exactly. Oh. I don't know if it was, I mean, there was another party where I, um, I don't think it was the same girl, but there's, never, there's inevitably a girl there that I'm trying to, you know, impress. And I went up to, it was a house party in someone's house, I didn't know anyone there really. I was Steve, you've come without trousers. <laughs> well, it worked for bloody Martin Wells. <laughs> and I, um, I went up to the toilet, and I had to do, you know, number twos. Brilliant. And I did them. <laughs> there was no toilet paper. <laughs> oh, come on! At the party. <laughs> and, and I was like, and yeah. I was scrabbling around in this bathroom thinking, what can I use? There was nothing. And I was thinking, oh God, what can I do? And, um, as I recall, in the end, I, I couldn't make anyone hear. I didn't want to sort of go out in this, into the hall and stuff. So I had to shout out the window into the garden where everyone was. No! Yeah. And someone had to come and bring me some. And, Brilliant. um, once again, it didn't, well, I wish I'd fucking had Zen in the eye because that means that I could have ripped some fucking pages out and wiped my arse. Chimpanzee, that he's gone and written it down again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, 
the ever-changing jingle for Carl's diary, excerpts of which we like to read each week. Suzanne said today it can be my day because she has been a bit of a pain with her illness and that. <laughs> <laughs> so she said I can do what I want today. We went for a walk around Green Park. Loads of tourists were about looking at the Queen's house. She was in because the flag was up. I wouldn't want to live there. Why wouldn't you want to live there? Just because it's right in the centre of town. It's just not in a good place, is it? It's got round about outside and that. Really it's busy. It's pretty good. I went for a pee in the toilets. When I came out, a pigeon had shat on Suzanne's coat. She was in a bit of a mood about it. A bird shot on my ear once. I left it for about 10 to 15 minutes until I got home. I washed it off and in that 10 to 15 minutes it had corroded me ear. You know, he's had a lot of problem with ears. Um, he told me the other day, he, uh, he got up, um, washed, had a bath, had some breakfast, went to the shops to get a newspaper and well, had a chat with a woman in the corner shop, got home, pottering around, looked in the mirror, he had a cotton bud sticking out of his ear. <laughs> he went, what annoyed me was, she didn't say anything. Like it's her responsibility. Yeah. No, but she knows me well enough to sort of, you know, <laughs> go, you know you got a cotton bud in your ear. No, she knows you well enough to go, Carl's got a cotton bud in his ear, I've seen worse. <sighs> when you when you've got a cotton bud in your ear, what interrupted I th I think you? Suzanne called or my dad called or something and then because I was running a little bit late because I'd been talking to them, the earbud was in, I just popped my coat on and went to the shop. Carl, you got a toothbrush in your mouth. Oh. Walked through Covent Garden. There were five of them mimes knocking about. I don't understand why people take pictures of mimes. Everyone looks like a mime in a picture. <laughs> that's so true. That's really true. If the point is they're staying still, if that's their skill, a picture won't tell that story. That's, that's absolutely true. <laughs> My dad took the cat to be put down today because it kept bumping into things since losing its sight. My mum said she's not going to get another one. She said the parrot is looking worried as it's seen the budgie and the cat go in the space of three months. <laughs> Your mum said the parrot's looking worried. What's the- what, what- what happened to the cat then? It- it- it gets into a lot of fights. It lost one eye and uh, then it got into another fight and lost another. Oh and no. And it was just walking around bumping into stuff. The, I mean, the vet sort of said, oh, we can do stuff to keep it alive and all that, but it's a bit out of order, isn't it? Because it costs a fortune, they shouldn't tell you. But- Mum and Dad can't afford to have eyes put on it and stuff. No, you, you can't put, have eyes put on a cat no, anyway. No, but they said, oh, we, we can do something here. We can what? Have, have its eyes sorted out. But it w um, I don't think you should be allowed cats. Why? Not the Pilkington family. Why not? Well, they, they have good dying. lives. Yeah, I know, but they have good lives whilst they're still knocking about. It's just that we get through them. <laughs> 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 it's a good job you're not gonna have kids. Oh, God almighty. I can't believe it. The cat that kept throwing up. So his mum shaved it. Unbelievable. Dry wipe cat. A mate sent me a story on email about a bloke in China who has this weird illness that means he can't have his picture taken. <laughs> That's not the- that's not the weird bit. If he tries, his body doesn't appear in the photo. Don't talk shit! He has had group pictures taken and everyone appeared apart from him. Don't talk shit! The that's story bollocks. had a picture next to it of a family photo and it said he was stood at the back but you couldn't see him. Right. He wasn't in the picture. He was in the picture. No, he wasn't in the picture. He's done loads of tests and stuff. No, there's don't- I haven't done loads of tests. This is bollocks. There's no way. This is scientifically possible. What's what? his want- yeah, now he's wanted. Just a white bit of paper up on the police wall. Have you seen this man? What man? If you see him, tell us. <laughs> You're talking shit. Suzanne watched the film You've Got Mail tonight for about the 14th time. I don't think you could properly fancy someone without seeing them. Unless you're blind. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's odd when blind people have affairs. Why is that odd? Just because most stuff is, is based on looks, isn't it? So you think once they've found someone, they're happy with them. Stick with them. But no, it's not true. It, no, but, I mean, most things are based on looks. What I mean is when you first, first, like, meet someone and that- Well, initially it's only looks, cos yeah. you don't know them. So that's what I'm saying. But that's, so a, that's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Well, no, it's just what I think. I'm not saying that that's, like, fact or anything. I'm just thinking, if you're blind, why mess about? You're still basing on it if it's only looks that yeah. you, people find- What? Yeah, I'm just saying, so why is a blind person messing about having an affair? Because I'm saying that- Presumably that blind person isn't basing anything on looks. 
I, I just, alright, I mean, maybe that's not, uh, I mean more like- Do you want me to cross it out? Shall I cross it out? Cause well, it's, 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 <laughs> it's just the same way I think I put how, you know, people, uh, I read something in a Sunday paper once with some bloke who was going out with some woman, uh, he ended up going out with a sister who was a twin. If you're gonna have a change, have a change. <laughs> Spoke to Ricky about trips to the moon. Oh. He was up for going just to see what the world looks like. I came up with the idea of a giant mirror on the moon that would reflect the world back. He had a few questions, but <laughs> but I had the answers. Yeah. He changed the subject. I won. Right. My first question was, how would you get it up there? He said, bit by bit. <laughs> That'd be a good mirror then, <laughs> wouldn't it? I said, how big would it be? He went, you'd still need a telescope. I said, how would you get it on the right side of the moon, always facing the right? He went, what? He went, does the moon move then? I went, yes. <laughs> and if we don't like the mirror on the moon, we can always wallpaper over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Suzanne's birthday tomorrow, so I've got to get her something. I sometimes think it would be best if we didn't celebrate birthdays. I think people would live a bit longer if they didn't know how old they were. Age puts restrictions on things. She said something about wanting one of them posh badges to put on her coat. I will look for one later. I love the fact that around the time that you've got to buy Suzanne her birthday present, you think that birthday presents are a bad idea. Got up early, it's Suzanne's birthday, gave her the card, a present. She was well happy with her posh badge. She wore it to work. It's quite nice, quite nice to hear a moment where she was actually happy for once <laughs> in your company. They always say when you get someone a present, you should buy them something they wouldn't buy themselves. Daft rule. I want something I would buy myself if I had the money. When I was young, me auntie Nora got me a present I wouldn't buy myself. It was a t-shirt with her face on. <laughs> <laughs> Looked at what's been going on in the world. Someone has found some people who live in an old town somewhere where they are so old-fashioned they still walk on all fours. There is a picture of them and they use shoes on their hands. That's not old-fashioned. Why is that old-fashioned? That's some kind of regressive evolution. Yeah. Really old-fashioned. Yeah. But it's not true, is it? It is true. It's somewhere in, uh... Well, I believe there are- they have found a group of people that are living and walking around on all fours, yeah, but I don't but believe they're wearing shoes on their hands. And I don't believe it's- they haven't evolved to standing <laughs> no. up. No, they just haven't seen other people walking on two feet. Don't talk shit all your life. That's all it's about, though, isn't it? You copy. When you're a baby, if you were stuck in a room, You'd wander about on all fours because that's that's the way. That's an easy way of getting about. So you only walk on two feet because you see everyone else doing it. Well, I don't believe that is the case because, as I understand it, some of the family are walking on two feet. So I don't know what the ins and outs of it are. I know there's a forthcoming documentary on the BBC, so maybe we should watch that and then we'll all know what's going on mm. instead of just leaping to conclusions because you read half of it on the internet we and then I, skipped but, on to but something all else. All I'm saying is, though, you would wear shoes on your hands if you're roaming about like that. <laughs> So I mean, you just confessed there that you, 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 you leapt from fact to fiction, did you, in the space of I'm, one I'm, diary entry? It's just that I saw a little picture. And you assumed that they'd be wearing shoes on their feet? If they've got hands. shoes on their feet, they might as well have them on their hands, because their hands are doing the same as the feet. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not gonna wear them on your hands, don't put them on your feet then. I'm beginning to think some monkey news was bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, treated Suzanne to her tea, went and got her a curry from the shop opposite. While I waited for the food, I read a story in the Metro newspaper about an alien gang oh. that kept appearing in someone's garden. Christ. The bloke moved, but when he used to pass the house at night, he would still see the aliens knocking about, hiding underneath his old shed. There was other alien stuff, but I had to go as the food was ready. Brilliant. Yeah, it's a bit annoying, that. Yeah, load of bollocks again. Well, good. More, um, drivel from Carl's diary next week. Right. Rockbusters. Quick. Right then, so last week gave you some initials, again, of artist or a band. Quick! Cryptic clue and that. Yeah. Um, the first one I gave you, the initials were N.D. Yeah. Uh, that Jamaican fella, uh, he doesn't want anything, right? So you gotta think about the accent there. Yeah. Um, he doesn't want anything, so, yeah. so, he's not, he's, so, he's not sort of demanding anything. Okay. No, no sort of demand, nil demand. <laughs> Neil Diamond. So it's like Neil Diamond. They'd say Neil Diamond, please. No, Can no. I have some Neil Diamond. No. Right. Neil Diamond. 
But just now it was all to do with, I've got no demands. Now it's a Jamaican person going in and asking for Neil Diamond in a Jamaican voice. Yeah, I know, but it's a cryptic clue, isn't it? Doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> the second one was, uh, the initial was E. Uh, I asked him to pass me the ball by using the red. Uh, what do you do if you chuck someone a ball? They head it back. Edit that, yeah. They, so he they so head it back. So you'd say, uh, edit, edit to us. Edit, edit us. That's, that's editors. What is That's, it? Is it a it's a band that are, no, that no, no, there's a band good called the, the Editors, but there's no band called Editus. Editus, what's that? Is it great? Is it a Greek band? Again, cryptic. Just you got no, to think cryptic. again, bollocks. Then the last one, uh, T R, with it, it was the initials. Yeah, the cryptic clue. He's got the woolly ones, but I've got the ones that run and charge at you. Go what, on. What have I got? Don't know. Well, sheep. Something to do with sheep. Right. Something to do with sheep. They're, they're the woolly ones. Yeah. What are the ones that run and charge at you? Oh, they're woolly as well. No, no, the but rams. not not as woolly. The rams, right? Yeah, there. The the ram ones, right? If you write that down. No, you not even write it down. It's a, that's, it's that's a Ramones. The so, ram ones. The ram no, ones. but it's how you say it, isn't it? It's not because it's not. No, no, it sort of changes about a bit. Just cryptic. <laughs> but, so, but your understanding cryptic, of the word cryptic is yeah. it can be anything. What am I thinking? Cryptic. Cryptic clues in a crossword have a logic to them. That's why people are able so, to answer them. Well done to Neil Fennan, who's in uh, in Canada. He's well, I just don't know what that says about bollocks, Neil. Bollocks, this. Right, do the next week's one. Right, then. Just get it over with. We've got to stop this. Monkey News is coming back. No, it's not coming back. There's, there's nothing going on. We're not doing it. Right, S-C are the initials of the artist of the band. Go on. S-C. Uh, the cryptic clue. Uh, don't, just, stop, just stop saying cryptic, because it's not. The, the clue is, I went into the restaurant on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, and the fella making the food was there each time. Right? S-C are the initials. I went into the restaurant on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday if you want. Uh, the fella making the food, he, he was there each time. What's so he changed it? Uh, uh, S-C. Was he there Saturday and Sunday or not? He can be if you want, I'm just saying he's there a lot. Oh, this Work is- this is, this is like pulling teeth. I'm trying to hurry it up. And the second one, <sighs> go into that woman's store and rip her off, right? Right. That's C. Okay. C. Go into that woman's store and, and rip her off. Okay. You know, if you're gonna do that. Oh, don't mumble <laughs> at the end of it. Go on. Just do the clue. And the last one, the initial E. Last one ever. You have had, had a go at laying down a track. But it ain't perfect, right? So you're sort of making a making a track. No, like just do the clue. You're making a track. You well, don't give us the clue. Down, don't but just it talk perfect. around it. Right, the initial is E. E. What's the clue? You have had a go at laying down the track, but it ain't perfect. Fine. A music track. Yeah. Well, no, but no, 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 no. You can't. <laughs> no, there's, they, these people can't ask questions. Well, I can. Oh, oh God. So send them in podcast at rickygervais dot com. Right, that's the end of. Uh, Another Ricky Gervais show. Oh, thank God for that. Another one next week. We've got to give value for money because oh. this is shit. So we've got to. What we do is because this is such dreadful bollocks. We're giving more of it. Yes, that's each of them. <laughs> yeah. So it's cheerio from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, Bye. and Carl Pilkington. Bye.